Hello, everyone. A little choppy. I might just reduce the bitrate. Uh, I... I'm going to leave this on for a bit because I need to figure out what the actual URL is, and then I need to... I just wait for people to show up. I'm going to reduce the bit rate of this thing. It has a tendency to crap out on me. Uh, let's just go standard definition. to our old standard definition. We were thankful of the privilege. And we'll just wait till this shows up in the YouTube thing. I can post the URL. Okay, I'm using like a Grampus. Good. Okay, we have five viewers. I'm just post five viewers. I'm just gonna tweak this out and then. Good God, this is like. Yeah, I can't see the chat at the moment, but I will be able to in a bit. And we are live, exclamation mark, space. And it's ended up at the wrong part of the tweet. Because everything is lagging several seconds behind my actual input. And tweet. Good. Oh my god. Hang on. Yikes. Okay, I can see the chat now. And uh, I'm just going to wait for Elgato to come back. Hey, Horad. Yeah, my capture card. It's not really my capture card. It's my um my computer itself is is not very good, basically. Uh, put the stream stuff. Let's try that again. I have an outline for this, so it should go okay. Uh. Hey, Neo Lucky. Oh, that's good, Exandil. Yeah, I'm just uh, waiting for this thing to properly start for me. Okay, here we go. Is this showing up? No, not yet. I've got to recapture the thing. Uh... Here we go. There we go. Okay.
Right, we all seem to be working. So, uh, how many viewers do we have? Okay, 19, that's good, right. Um, what this is going to be is when I was streaming the map comparison, a lot of people were asking questions about, like, uh, uh, the stuff they'd seen in old trailers, um, like uh, concept art and stuff, and if that was that was in any of the maps. And uh, it wasn't, so I didn't cover it, but there was enough interest that I thought I would stream this, which is going to be a lot more, I guess, eclectic. It's just like weird crap that didn't quite make it in. And I've organized this by area, so I might start... Now, you've got 24 viewers. Okay, I did not expect that many this quickly. So let's, um, I won't be using my split screen setup from last time because, uh, some of these images are like huge and need to be like spun around and stuff to fit on the screen. So it's going to be a bit more random, but, um, so what this is, is version 1.0 of the game. So this is the version you would get if you installed the game directly from disk and then didn't download any patches. Bloodborne had a day one patch. So, unless you played this, like, complete, like, you didn't have internet when you when you bought Bloodborne, you likely haven't seen a lot of this. I know that, um, Mal slash Bell Ring a Cat, like, she played it offline and she was telling me that she remembered a bunch of stuff, so... It's going to be a combination of stuff that was in 1.0 and didn't make it into this, and also just like, yeah, weird things from concept art and early trailers and stuff. So, I'll get started. Um, I actually haven't finished the game, so we're going to see some bosses, because there were some weird boss things I wanted to show off. The first thing I want to show off is, we talked a lot about how Kanehurst was quite badly hacked up we looked at the maps and there's evidence of it over here it's kind of random and hard to find but there is a here we are i tweeted this out because i was worried i might not be able to get it to trigger there is a misaligned piece of clipping um around here that lets you like walk in the air there we go uh you can yeah you can see my my yeah there we go So this is patched out. It's only on 1.0. But this is like further evidence of just how much of Kanehurst was removed because presumably like there was there was architecture here and they just didn't have time to like clean it up properly when they when they changed the area design. So basically, I'm starting in Kanehurst. I have this roughly planned out. The uh, One of the delightful things about the uh, version 1 of Bloodborne is that, like, the loading times are hideous. So I've tried to... Do I've planned this out kind of like a really shitty speed run to avoid as many loading screens as possible. So another thing that a lot of people haven't seen... Let's move my mic slightly... Uh, your internet's shit. My internet might be shit as well. Like, this is, um, barely hanging together on my end. You can notice there's gonna be quite a lot of, like, black dropped frames and things. Let's get a blood licker's attention. So, in the, um... Ooh, there's one behind me. <laughs> Off to a great start. Uh, if you know the game, you will know that... Upon death... Bloodlickers explode. But on 1.0, they actually have corpses. They don't ragdoll, they have like a death pose, and they just kind of, I don't know, they just kind of lie there. The ones in the Chalice Dungeons do this as well. And if you'll... You can see that, like, they tend to... It's like one static pose, and they sort of, like, 
lie at a very awkward angle. So I'm starting to think maybe they deleted them because they just couldn't get the ragdolls working properly or something like that. Because it's, it's fully, like, it can happen. It's just, um, yeah. Sort of odd. So... Go for a run. There's a bunch of Kano stuff I want to show off. Actually, I'll, I'll wait till I'm out of the castle. This is, I think, as safe as we can get here. Um, there is... Uh, having looked through this... Hey, Trin's here! Good! Uh, my monitor is very crowded, so apologies if I, like, don't see people. So, one of the things I've looked at is there's, like, an NPC parameters file. And it lists all these NPCs in the game, some of which are not actually used. And one of them is... A character who is called... He's called Vileblood Drifter Leo. So this is a character who we we don't know what he looked like, but... There is data in the game for this guy. So this, this is like a, a face that's just like in the data. Um, all the NPCs that use the basic human model, they have like data for their, their sliders. You can actually, if you want, um, it's on the Bloodborne wiki. You can recreate basically any character you want. You can like, if you want to play as Yosefka, if you want to play as like uh, Arab, um, Adela, someone like that. This slider info is there because they all use the same model. So yeah, that guy is in there, and there is data for a character called Vileblood Drifter Leo. And I guess it just sort of lines up that that, that might be Vileblood Drifter Leo, because I don't know why else they would make this guy. He's just kind of there. The other NPC, who we don't see at the moment, um, I will get to... I talked about this on the map stream, but I... I didn't do a particularly good job of showing it off, so let's just run past this. I want to get to the library first. My character is, I think, level 240-something, so... There's not much chance of me dying, but, like, being constantly pummeled and shoved around is not great, so I just want to find somewhere safe. Here we go. So, the other NPC that I mentioned uh, during the, uh, the map stream was a character who was just called Library NPC. And I mentioned that he is probably a removed character who we have a model of. So, let's call him up. Um, just in the, in the, uh, like, while I'm in the library, you can see that there's this table here. And it's under a chandelier that's actually not... Oh no, it is attached to something, I thought it wasn't. Anyway, it's lit to look very significant. It's like, if you were running through this area, your eye is immediately drawn to the table because of the lighting. And you can see that there's books everywhere. Um, but there's no one there. And another thing that I noticed when I was, like, talking about this last time is that this area here is it's completely safe. If you put an NPC up here, there's no chance that they get killed by anything because there are no enemies up here. The enemies have no way of getting up here if they wanted to. So, sorry, there's a cat on me. I'm just putting her on the floor. Um, so this would be a good place to put an NPC. And I, I noticed that in the param files, there is a character who is just called Library NPC. 
So I will show you who I think that is. I think it might be this guy. This is a data mined character. Uh, I think SanaDSK was the first person who found them. But you can see that they have a book. So the cat is constantly trying to jump on me. She's attacking my headphone leads because she must triggers her predator reflex. Anyway, um, this is this weird old guy. He's got this this book in his hand. So that very much fits with him being in a library. Yeah, fa yeah. We, we, we were calling him Father Norbert. I don't think it's Father Norbert. I think um, we initially thought it might be Norbert, but it's not. So this guy here, um, what he's wearing is... That is an old version of what the Healing Church wore. You can see that he's got... Let's keep blowing him up. He's got that clasp. It's like a wheel-shaped clasp. And the members of the Healing Church all wear something like that. If you look at, like, the church servants, they have the, the wheel clasp on. Around their necks. And uh, another thing I brought up when I was talking about him... Uh, Neil, like he just said, it's Christopher Lloyd. I can tell you who it is. I think it's Anthony Hopkins. Because this game rips off, completely shamelessly, Coppola's 92 Dracula movie. And in that, the there is a, a character played by Anthony Hopkins who dresses, like, looks very similar to this, and he, he is Van Helsing. So I think, like, the character may have come from this. Um, Sam's saying he's not a librarian. I don't think he's a librarian. He's he's called Library NPC, as in li an NPC who is in the library. And the other thing about him is he's got this, this cloak on. This very, very, like, furry, thick cloak. Which absolutely fits with him having, like, he's gone to the snow, to where Kanehurst is. So I'll show you, like... What I mean by this being the old Healing Church uh, garb. Because we have another picture of it. And it's a picture that you've probably already seen. Because it is... It is in Kanehurst. He's wearing what this guy wears. So this... This is presumably like the old Healing Church design when they were dressed much more like traditional monks. And then they they got rid of it and replaced it with the like the black uh the black kind of robe, which is also taken from Dracula, but it's taken from the uh, Universal Studios Dracula. So, yeah, that's what I think's going on with that guy. Um there's some other cut stuff in Kanehurst. Um there is an item in Kanehurst that, like, we have, um, a scholar of research at Breadcrumbs is asking, I think he is, like, someone, early on it looks like the Healing Church, um, Kanehurst was kind of their equivalent of the fishing hamlet. It was, like, a place they went and they, like, raided it and they killed all the people and then they, like, sought all this forbidden knowledge there. So I think he was just going to be some guy, like, stuck in Kanehurst, kind of, like, trying to figure out what went on there. Um, trying to figure out all this, like, old Thumerian knowledge. So, another thing you can find in Kanehurst. I can, I'll, um, people bring up Norbert. I will talk about Norbert later on, because um, that, uh, that is quite a story. Is this. So, people may have seen this, because there was like a big dump of, of item IDs and stuff. This item... I'll just black out the Elgato. This item here is called Doll Repair Kit. And if you look at it closely, you can see that, like, okay, the, it's got the doll's eyes, and it's got, like, it's like a brush or something you would use to, like, fix her up. Neo Lucky will know about this, because she makes dolls. So, yeah, this was called Doll Repair Kit, and we knew it existed. Yeah, Neo Lucky recognizing the eyes. So, we knew this thing existed, but we had no idea where it was. And we were thinking, like, Oh, was, was this start of the game, like, the doll starts broken, and then you have to do some quest to fix her. But, no, it looks like 
at least from what we can tell, this item was found in Kanehurst. And that was always a late game area. So something happened in Kanehurst that was related to the doll, but obviously it wouldn't make sense for the doll to like not to not work for this long. So you would have done something like people have talked about like upgrading the doll. I have a feeling it is something to do with the doll in the workshop because she, not the dream because she is like broken on the floor. And something else I can call up here is uh there is a model for a broken doll. I'm just trying to like shrink this down because it's gigantic. Um, this, I think this was ripped by Laura slash Astral Lace. Uh, I can't quite remember. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I'll just try to make it small. This is a huge, huge image. There. So there is, there is a model in there for like the doll to be completely broken. And I'm wondering if the idea was like the one that you found in the workshop was all smashed up and you had to fix it. And the one in the dream was was moving. But like I don't I don't really know where this um this thing actually played into it, but we know that the doll repair kit was in Kanehurst. So yeah, there's something something weird going on there. Um there's also, like, a bunch of other Kanehurst items that are just, like, different versions of the, um, the summons and stuff like that. And I will get to them later on, because one of them is pretty significant. Uh, I just want to run to Annalise's throne room. I've already beaten Ligarius, so don't worry. Yeah, nostalgic douchebag saying the game is like mystery after mystery. This is because it, it was in development for so long. And so much stuff got changed. But like... Because some people kind of act like, oh, there's like a completely coherent story and we're just missing parts of it. When it's more like the, the stuff we keep digging up is like, it was this really long iterative process where ideas were like added and removed and added and removed, etc, etc. So, um... Workshop looking like it burned. Yeah, that's one of the removed lines. German actually has a line where he says, like, Oh, the workshop was burned. And he's, he's sort of, like, talking to himself. Um, Beautiful Baron Tutor, yeah, I'm playing on 1.0 because I want to show off a bunch of weird shit. Speaking of weird shit, all these knight statues have one leg. So, for the longest time, I just assumed, oh, this is clearly an error. Like, they just, they made this thing, and then they, like, either forgot to, or there was a glitch or something, and one of the legs just didn't copy across or whatever. And that's why they're all like this, because it's such an odd, you know, like, it just looks wrong. It looks weird. So, that's what I thought until we did some data mining. And we discovered... That there is a one-legged knight. And it's the same leg. I get a better look at this. Yeah. They have the same leg missing. Like, it's actually a thing. And it gets even... Uh, I don't know if you'd say it gets even better, it just gets even weirder, because... He had a horse! And, yeah, it's the same thing. He's got, like, one leg, it's the same missing leg. And he's riding a horse. Yeah, um, 
Peabody talking about Kanehurst Knights removing their legs because of beasthood. That is something they introduce in the um in the DLC. They talk about like beasthood creeps up the right leg. And I I don't know what, but like yeah, one one legged people was like it was a, a motif early on. Cause um in the if you take the honoring wishes ending, you end up with your leg cut off. But there it looks like it's cut off to keep you in the dream. But here it almost looks like it's like traditional or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Uzi Vatel Hrazdi, or sorry if I mispronounced that, brought up Sekiro. I actually think that might be part of it because if you look at, at the backstory of um, the sculptor in Sekiro, the story there is that he had his arm cut off because he was giving into that, like, the Shura. The demon, like, the, the war demon thing. And the, his arm was cut off to stop him killing people. And I think, is that what they were g going for? That, like, as people became blood drunk, in order to stop them giving in, you would, like, cut one of their legs off so they were stuck in a, in a chair and they couldn't get out. But yeah, incredible that the missing leg actually <laughs> looks like it was intentional. Very, very odd. So... Here's Annalise. Uh, what else do I got here? Um, so... So there's a bunch of different versions of Annalise, and... This is one that, like... I think I've talked about this, but in case you haven't heard, there is a version of her that talks like the doll. So I'll play that now. Hopefully this will work and not crash. It's going to be audio in this version, because I've been, like... <laughs> cutting audio out and editing it together. So hopefully the desktop will just pick this up. Someone there. Well, whoever you are, it matters not. I will not die. Tarnished as I am, be off with you. So that's not the entirety of her dialogue, but you can kind of hear in the way it's performed that, like, this early version of Annalise, she's a lot less haughty. She's much more, like, defeated. And curiously, um, her... Okay, hang on, one more thing. Um... The blood drake concept has been, like, shifted around so many times. Hey, Sen. So... Here is a removed item. Now, this is, like, partially restored, so, like, I don't know if that was the icon, but... You, you were at some point going to be able to get blood from Annalise. In the same way that you get blood from other characters, and it says here that it, it increased stamina regen. And I want to talk a little more about, like, the way that the early versions of Annalise play out. Because in all of them, like, you'll know from playing the game that her story doesn't really, um... It doesn't really go anywhere. Like, Alfred kills her and then she comes back to life again, and that's the end of it. But from the early versions of her dialogue, she's constantly begging you to kill her. And that's where the whole, like, immortality thing comes from, is that if you kill Annalise, she just comes back again. But in, in the early stuff, like, it's much more of a curse for her. And it looks like... The end of the quest line was you would actually, like, if you completed her quest somehow, that would kill her. And I'm going to show you what, rather than the blood drag thing, because if we... I've got a blood drag here. Um, from the description of the blood drag, it's like, she's trying to conceive a child by taking all this corrupted blood in, but... Nothing in any version of her dialogue suggests that. It looks like it was added, like, later on. And I'll show you how weird blood dregs are. 
Uh, I want to go to Tomb of Erden first. So before I get onto the weirdness of Blood Dregs, I want to show off something. Hopefully, I, oh, I really hope I brought Pungent Blood with me, because if I didn't, I'm going to have to go back to the dream and get to sit through this hideous loading screen another four times. Now we have 69 viewers. Nice. Uh, good, I have pungent blood. Okay. Grab some. Where did it go? There it is. So one of the odd things, one of the many, many odd things about Bloodborne is that everyone in Yharnam is yelling like, away with you, beast! And yet, among the Yharnamites are these things that are qu quite obviously monsters. Hi, Kyan. You are viewer 69. That's so appropriate. So yeah, among the Yharnamites are these things that are quite clearly, like, hideous beast monsters. And they don't seem to have a problem with them. And the game doesn't consider these things beasts. Like, there is a, a beast bonus damage that doesn't apply to these. But something you might not be aware of, but they do react to, is... They attack Pungent Blood. Other Yarnamites don't do that. Like, I'll show you. Like, these guys, they just don't care. But... These guys, who are ostensibly not beasts, they're just very, very hairy. They... they just love pungent blood cocktails. So, something that, like, has... I've brought up a couple of times is that this game went through... The maps went through a lot of changes. One of the changes was that you could swap out enemies on the fly. And, annoyingly, I don't have an image of this because it was on a Twitch stream that Lance has removed. <laughs> but, um... Or possibly just got removed for him, I don't know. But basically, that spot over there where those two big huntsmen... The gang still calls them huntsmen were... There's just two dudes, two regular Yarnamites in that exact position. And then there's a function that swaps them for those big, big transformed huntsmen. And that's true of, like, all the areas of Yarnum, uh, central Yarnum in the, in the old version of the game. It's like, there's different sets of enemies. There's, like, the regular Yarnamites, and then there's a function that will swap them for those big ones. So it looks very much like when the uh, when the Red Moon hits. Initially, the plan was that the Red Moon would hit and all of the normal human huntsmen in Yharnam would be replaced by those things. And then when they had to gut that, they just made them a regular enemy. I guess because they didn't want to waste it. But yeah. That's why those things are so weird and why they're like half a beast and half not a beast. I'll take my, uh, my hunter cap off so you can see this. I made a new character, hang on. Here we go. Beautiful. So, I mentioned that there were a whole lot of, like, Kanehurst items. And, kind of see where I'm going with this, because there's Viola's corpse. So, let's grab the brooch. I'll show you... Uh, Gascoin does not react to pungent blood. Uh, I will show you something very, very odd about that brooch. Here's a bunch of items. Um, this is the the order that they're stored in the game. So you can see it's like 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, blah, blah, blah. So you can see that this is all Kanehurst stuff. So we've got like the Kanehurst summons. We've got the wedding ring. We've got, hey, vodka, hi. Uh, we've got like Annalise's flesh. We've got the Valblood register, 
blood dregs, etc. And then the brooch is in the middle of that. And if we just like, I'll just do a quick uh, change here. So, like, all evidence points to the brooch item, that graphic, at least, starting off as a Kanehurst thing. Uh, get a better look at it. Hang on. Yeah. This is, uh, probably started off as a Kanehurst thing, and it ended up here. It, um, worth pointing out that Viola does not exist in the alpha. The whole concept of Gascoigne's family is, like, not there. They added that later on. And if you want to see, like, the degree to which they sort of made that out of existing things, um, people don't notice this, but it's like... Look at Viola. That's the doll. Like, that is the doll's model. And they just slightly changed the textures on her. To make viola. And the same is true of Gascoigne's daughter when she um when she falls from the, the ladder and dies. That's again, that's just the doll's model with a different texture. Um and slightly different hair. So some other stuff I wanted to show off with uh Erden. Uh, people, this is, like, not super interesting, but I'll just show you anyway. The, um... This is the original way you got into Erden Chapel. Um, this is from a Lance stream. You can see that is just, like, there's, like, a spiral staircase that you would have gone here. Zoom in on her. Okay, cool. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna grab the monocular, so I'll come back and zoom in on her later on. But, like, yeah, that's, um... Originally, Erden had... Erden Chapel had this, like... This, like, spiral staircase in the middle of it that got replaced by the underground part here with the water. So I'm now going to show off... The oddness of blood dregs that shows, like, a little bit about the, the Annalise uh, questline. So we're on 1.0, and I've got the Corruption Rune equipped. So, what happens if I... So, like, for reference, if you have Corruption equipped on, uh, like, in the post-1.0 versions of the game, what happens is if you kill enemy Hunters, it's got to be Hunters, they drop Blood Dregs. Regular NPCs don't, but on 1 drops them. You get them from regular NPCs. You don't have to kill hunters. I just want to run through here to show off some other stuff. Hang on. Well, the Dweller will come back to life. I, I have this... This character is backed up to the cloud. 
Uh, every time I want to do anything, I download this save, because she is level 240, but hasn't killed Gascoin yet. So if I need to get from A to B quickly, I can just uh, load up her and do it. So hang on, let's just... Okay. So, as we all kind of know, uh, this has been talked about quite a bit, this area here, this was, this is the area that the Cleric Beast door leads to. There it is. And the idea was that you would be able to beat the Cleric, well, okay, maybe you couldn't beat the Cleric Beast, we'll get into that. Um, that door would be one way into Cathedral Ward. So instead of taking the way that we took now, we imagine that door worked, we would go into Cathedral Ward this way. We'd run up along here. And this is how we would get in, instead of, like, going there now. Because this area here is not, um, it's not very useful. There's really nothing of value here except the monocular. Which is only really of value to me. Uh the most pathetic man in existence. There's also a completely not great blood gem. But yeah, and you would have you would have entered Cathedral Ward this way. But the gas coin way would also have worked, so you would have had two ways to get into Cathedral Ward. Like you would have had the option to do it either way. And I'll show you why that is interesting. Because I was looking at my notes, and one of the notes says, Make sure to grab the monocular, you stupid fuck. I did. So, let's show you what happens. There is... Now, people might recognize this scene from ye oldie trailers. This is from the Project Beast trailer. And it's of a bunch of Yarnamites. Well, we didn't know where they were, but... I will show you where they are. They're at that gate. And you can see from the, um, the angle that they're coming in through the gate into Cathedral Ward. And then there's a second shot that shows them descending on the plaza with their torches, kind of like the end of Frankenstein. Like, they clearly from just like the visual grammar of the shot. What's happened is they have come into Cathedral Ward and they're like attacking cathedral what they're going to go and like try burning it down and um as has been pointed out in the chat this cutscene is still in the game it's just not used so lance restored it uh where did it go so that cutscene is still in there uh, it just never plays but you can see like hey they're all i've had 99 viewers wow incredible um, sorry, I just looked down for the first time. Yeah, they're all coming in... They're coming into Cathedral Ward. Like, they're attacking it. And, like, this is something that is... I've talked about this before. It's in the game. It's in there, but it's, like, not played up. And that's that... What happened was, after the burning of old Yarnum, Yarnum turned on the Healing Church and went, like, oh, shit. And then... <laughs> They attacked, they like, they're at war with each other. And that's why the Healing Church are all like barricaded in Cathedral Ward. Because they're like, they're like, they've like gone into, into siege mode to get away from the rest of Yarnum who are attacking them. And like, um, I'll show it off a little bit. There's a ton of like Healing Church corpses just lying around this area. That is like evidence of the Yarnamites like just descending on and killing members of the Healing Church. Um, that little alley where Ariana is is a good place to see it. I'll just run down there, hang on. Uh... 
uh, where are you? Yeah, like, uh, hang on. You. Die. You can see, like, there's all these Yarnamites hanging around this area. And there's just, like, all these dead healing church people. Including, like, the corpse that's got the Healing Church plaque set on it. And, uh, it's really kind of obvious if we go around to where we meet Alfred. Uh, no, the, uh, Herbert's talking about this. There is a note, it very explicitly says that, like, the Healing Church abandoned the rest of Yana. Uh, I will show you, like, what they're getting at. It's like, it's just like dead healing church people goddamn everywhere. It's like a massacre. Uh, run through here. Like, dead healing church people. Dead healing church, dead healing church. Like, it's not, it's not gone well. And there's all this, like, removed, there's a removed line where someone yells death to the minister and, like, death to the priest. That is, like... That's not supposed to play, but it does anyway, so a lot of people are familiar with it. Uh, what else we got going on? Um, yeah, there's uh, another, like, one I can show you from the... Hey, hey, uh, Nix here, Thin Cinder Thief, hi. Well, the Healing Church corpses are, like... Like, the Healing Church and, and Yarnum have a very antagonistic relationship that's, like... It's in there. Uh, they just... I, I think it's to do with, like... From seemed to like the idea of there being different factions fighting each other, and then it doesn't ever quite work out. Like, Dark Souls 3 is another example of that, with the, the Aldrich Faithful fighting the Giants. Like, they're clearly meant to be fighting each other, but they just sort of stand there and do nothing. So, let's head to... Where Amelia is. Um, I just want to make sure this area is clean before I do it. So, in the very, very first uh, Project Beast trailer, you get... Ah, uh, here we go. I'll go to roughly where we are in the, in the trailer and show you. About here. So there's, like, fireballs being launched from there. And the reason there's fireballs being launched from there is that those fireballs are being fired by, because we get another angle on that little spot, God, this is such a low-res image, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, the, the enemies that we now know as Lauren Clerics, they are, like, guarding the cathedral. They're, like, shooting at you as you approach it. And internally, they are just called Sniper Priest. And there's other versions of them for other parts of the cathedral. They're not used. But, like, Upper Cathedral Ward has them. Other places have them. And they, they're, like, there's actually some in Forbidden Woods. And they're called... Yeah, they're just called Sniper Priest. And the idea is, I think, that... It was just going to be that the members of the Healing Church all turned into these things. I wasn't just the, the like, big deal clerics who did it. So, Amelia's still alive, but... Uh, based on this character's stats, she's not going to be for long, so... We'll just take her out. People probably already know this, but um, for those of you who don't, 
the Amelia model that you see, like, when she's human, that is just one of the bell maidens that you, like, uh, that spawn when you ring the bell. But they just retexture her so she's got a white, a white robe instead of a black one. And she has, like, human skin instead of weird zombie skin. But the reason you never see her face is because she has, like, a horrible zombie face. So let's just get rid of her. That was Amelia. So, if you've uh, followed, like, removed stuff, you will know that the original boss of the Grand Cathedral was the Cleric Beast. I'll get a picture of her up here. Him, sorry. Uh, God, this... I keep having to resize everything. It's not ideal. Here we go. So the original boss of the cathedral was the cleric beast. And there is still a cutscene in there. Um, Lance restored it, you can see it on his channel. Of the cleric beast it would leap from... The reason it leaps now, because it's hard-coded to leap, it would leap from the window. The Lumen Flower Gardens window. It would, like, jump down behind you. And so that, yeah, Father Norbert, this is what I was getting at before with the Anthony Hopkins guy. People call that little priest guy Father Norbert. Um, what would have happened initially is that you would have been told by characters, like the Gilbert equivalent, go to the cathedral and talk to Father Norbert, he'll know what's going on. And then when you reach there, you'd be attacked by the Cleric Beast. You'd kill the Cleric Beast, and the Cleric Beast would drop. This is back when they had Boss Soul equivalent drops. It would drop the, it was called the Liver of Father Norbert. I will show you the... I have a list of livers. Here's our list. These are called living livers. These were the original, like, boss soul equivalents. So, what would happen is you would beat the cleric beast and it would drop... It would say living liver of Father Herbert. They kept going back and forth between whether it was going to be Herbert or Norbert. They never really settled on it. But um, when he dropped it, that would be the clue. Oh, okay... Uh, Father Herbert slash Norbert, Norbert, Horbert, whatever, has become the Cleric Beast. Oops. And we'll come back to this list of livers later on because it tells you a fair amount about, like, early bosses. So, you would beat uh, Herbert Norbert, and then you would meet... This is where things get very strange. You would meet an NPC. And, um... We'll find out who Dream Demon is later on, Vodka. So, you would meet an NPC, and that NPC was called Mikolash. And this is his dialogue. It was never recorded, but we have the subtitles. So he would say, My name's Mikolash. I'm head of the Healing Church. Father Herbert was in a terrible state, but you probably saved him. I'll thank you in his stead, Umbasa. So the idea is, okay, you killed Herbert. He was in charge of the Healing Church. He died. Now... Mikolash has taken over in his stead. And Mikolash would tell you, uh, you're captured by the nightmare and you seek the blood of a sage. So blood of a sage was the original kind of MacGuffin. It was the pale blood equivalent. Like you got to go find, it would say seek the blood of a sage instead of seek pale blood. And then Mikolash would say to you, I can't help you right now, but I can tell you one thing. Go to the university. Head west from the plaza and through the forest of snakes. There you will find an ancient abandoned university. The knowledge you seek will be there. 
So he's the guy. He would straight up say to you, hey, go to Bergenworth. Because, like, one of the things I've mentioned about this game's storytelling is basically, after you kill Amelia, you just kind of do things because there's no, you're in a video game and there's nowhere else to go. So, like, you, you beat Amelia and then a, you have a password to a door and it's like, I guess I go through here now because I can. But here, yeah, you would have an NPC, Mikolash, who would say, hey, uh, here's what you have to do next if you want to complete your quest to find the blood of a sage. Oh, thank you, Lazaru, for the two pounds. So... Now, the altar. Let's have a look at the altar. Because this is going to be important later on, right? So the first thing about the altar is... Straight up, we have Lawrence's beast skull on it. That's another very, very odd thing, because it's like, why does the Healing Church have on public display evidence that the guy who founded them turned into a werewolf? Well, if you remember the old trailers, there was a human skull. We knew about this image, and like, that is on the altar. Um, you can see it's the, the top part here. That's where it goes. And so, like, yeah, there would have been a human skull on the altar. And that is also in the Project Beast trailer in another form. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's very small, but... This is from the Cleric Beast fight. It's actually kind of creepy when you zoom because it's glowing. There it is. So, yeah, when you initially encountered the, the Cleric Beast, there would have been a human skull on the altar. And, um, if you're familiar with the, the intro of the game, you will know that like, that, the intro to Bloodborne shows up a number of things that don't really make any sense in the context of the actual game. But that has Lawrence's skull. And Lawrence's skull is, instead of being above ground, it's underground. It's, like, hidden away. And that makes a lot more sense, like, thematically. The idea that the Healing Church have... On public display, they've got a human skull. Like, yeah, this is the skull of our founder, our great St. Lawrence. And then somewhere hidden away, they have the beast skull because they don't want anyone to know about it. And it appears to be underground. It's not above ground. Like, it's if you see the intro, it's like somewhere, it looks almost looks like it's in the Chalice Dungeons. So, if we remember, the DLC, that had... An altar that went up and down. You could swap the altar in the... There was the altar showing the, the three healing church priests. And then there was the... The um the altar underneath it that had Lawrence's human skull on it. So... Okay. What if that happened originally? Well... You can see where I'm going with this. Um, here is a model of the altar... This was ripped by uh, someone called Blue, who is not on Twitter or YouTube, so I can't link to their stuff, sorry. Uh, she, is on, uh, she is on Tumblr, she is a 3D art person. This is the altar. This is the 3D model of the altar that we have. This is the Waking World altar, this is not the DLC altar. And if we have a look around very curiously, or not curiously, if you're me, and you've been suspecting this for quite some time, <laughs> there is a housing for a chain. That all the lifts have. And I got Blue to take another image of it, because I'm like, holy shit, do you realize what you just uncovered? Um, and she took a very nice one here. Where did I put it? Oh no, it's gone. Come back. Come back, image. 
it's so small, it's gone off the screen and I can't get it back. Let's bring back a big one and drag it back. That's better. So yeah, um, it is a lift. The original altar, the altar that they have, not the DLC altar, it is a lift. Um, she took a clearer one, I'm trying to get it. Uh, where did it go? That's better. Yep. So yeah, this absolutely could have functioned as a lift. And yeah, you do ride it in the DLC. I am absolutely certain that the lift altar in the DLC is like a remnant of this. And I can show you something else, which is that in the old trailer, there's a scene where the cleric beast lifts you up really, really high. It's about to slam you. You can see that. Where are you? There is a much, much, like, there's like a shaft that goes all the way up. It's not the little dome we have now. Like, I'll look up there now. So you can see that there's like, there's like a, it's like a quite shallow dome and it's got these, the like walkway around it that you use to get to Ibriatus. But here, like, it just goes all the way up and there's no walkway. So yeah, um, I'm pretty convinced, I th at this point, like, I think it's pretty conclusive that that was a lift. And they just edited it out and put it back in the, um, in the, the DLC, like a lot of things. So, I'm now going to trigger the flashback. One of the things about 1.0 is it uses slightly different lighting. So as a result of that, it, um, you, you can kind of get a better view of some things and a worse view of other things. So when we do this um, cutscene, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the, the Bergenworth interior than you normally do. Game very quiet. Okay, I'll I'll up it slightly. Uh, we don't really need to listen to much of the audio. So, yeah, you could see a little more of Bergenworth there. I remember the first time I figured that out, I thought, we, oh, we'll be able to figure out exactly, like, where Willem is, because Willem's got two different chairs and everything. But as Lance pointed out, and this should have been obvious because of the way loading works, um, that scene's not actually taking place at Bergenworth. There's just a very, very small, like, chunk of Bergenworth's map in this map. It's, like, underground. And the game just puts the camera there. So it's not, like, it, what you see in that is not necessarily what you see in, um... Well, he's not actually really representative of Bergenworth. It's like a, a set. Uh, speaking of Lance, if you are familiar with his work, which you should be, you will know that... Lawrence, quote-unquote, is in that cutscene. He is walking around, and they use him to orient the camera, but... It's Mikolash. 
So Mikolash is the guy in the cutscene who's actually talking to Willem. Um, I don't know. I think, like, early on it looks like Mikolash and Lawrence were kind of the same guy. There was just, like, one of, uh, one of the university professor's students sort of got got uh, big ideas, founded a church, blah, blah, blah. And, like, that's... <laughs> and then later on, that sort of got split into the character of Lawrence, who founded the church, and then Mikolash, who became the, like... The, um... The guy who was doing the weird ritual and everything. Uh, is that it for Cathedral? Okay, now I am gonna see... Can I do this? Yes, good. Okay. I need 15 insight for this. So I'm not gonna run all the way to Hemwick. Because I think it is actually faster than warping. Because I want to show you some stuff. Uh, couldn't they have made a pre-rendered cutscene? Um, they could have. I think, though, they wanted to show, like, the way that your character reaches out to Lawrence's skull. Also, if it was done in engineering, it'd be easier to, like, edit on the fly. Oh, Connie, um, the lore implication is that, like, initially it looks like the st oh, We've got a while, so I can just talk. It looks like the story was that, like, one of Willem's students... Founded the Healing Church and then went in contact with the Red Moon, etc. And then that got split into two characters. It got split into Lawrence, who founded the church, and then Nicolash, who did all the contacting the Red Moon stuff. And here we go. Ah, here we are. Mad Ones. This is what I came for. So. So something a lot of people don't really see, because they do Hemwick first and they never come back again. If you go to Hemwick, when night has fallen and you have 15 or more insight, it triggers those things, they call the Mad Ones, to spawn. And quite a lot of them do. And I forgot to open the door. So I've took the long way around. So the reason that I like I'm interested in the, uh, the mad ones. Hang on. I just want to get up here so I don't get bitten by something. And turn the sound down slightly for me and up for the stream. Okay, we're getting sound good. Get rid of this thing. So those mad ones, they have variants for every single area of the game. In the in the like NPC enemy parameters. So like every area of the game. There is, like, a trigger that's like, if your insight is at this level, spawn mad ones. But they only actually use them in Hemwick. But it would have been, like, an ongoing... That was the initial idea. They were, like, an ongoing effect. Where the the mad ones would just, like, dog you throughout the game. And what what's really interesting about the, the mad one entities is that... The notes on them say, like, they don't refer to insight, they refer to sanity. And they abbreviate sanity to S-A-N. And if you know the Call of Cthulhu RPG, that will be very, very familiar to you. Because in the Call of Cthulhu RPG, you have a stat called sanity that just kind of measures how 
literally how sane you are. It's the equivalent of insight in Bloodborne. And, um, yeah, Bloodborne just ripped off the sanity system to make insight. But yeah, internally, like, they're completely open about it and they just call it sanity. Um, uh, F uh Filippo saying it's like the Forlorn. Yeah, like the Forlorn. Um, the Forlorn, for those who don't know, Dark Souls 2 added an invader called the Forlorn who just shows up, like, throughout the game sort of trailing you. Anyway, the reason I'm in here is because what, what started this whole thing off is that people were asking me about an image they all remembered, which was Vicar Amelia in the Witch of Hemwick's room. It's this. Because last time I did this, I went over a very, like, old map, and they were like, oh, does it say anything about Vicar Amelia? And, like, it didn't. But, like, this is the image they're referring to, and people were like, hey, what, what do you know about this? So, the first thing I want to point out about Amelia in this room is... She's still... Like, her hand is, is positioned. You can see the pendant is there. Um, you can't see the, the body of the pendant, but you can see, like, in the bottom middle of the screen, you can see that the gold chain from the pendant is hanging down. So she always had the pendant. Um, it wasn't like a, it was always part of that character. This is this is from this is from Project Beast. This is like old. And uh, sorry, I keep grabbing the wrong part of the image. So people were like, "Oh, well, was she actually in there, or did they did they just have the boss finished and then put her in this room as a placeholder?" And yeah, Vodka pointing out she has a black robe in the concept art. Yeah, she doesn't have the white one. And I think it's black in this image, too. The lighting makes it hard to see. Um, so, people were like, well, was she originally in here? And like, I, I don't know, but I can tell you what I do know. So, because I am human garbage, uh, a, about a year or so ago, I was talking to Meph about this, and she's like, well, you could just recreate the angle. And I did. So here, here I have recreated, as far as I can tell, the exact angle. Um, the hunter is in a different place. Because, like, the camera's moving differently. But, like, you can tell. Even though this, like, obviously I can't recreate the angle exactly because I don't have, like, an ability to manually edit XYZ coordinates on a camera. But, you should, if this is accurate, like, you should be able to see the side of that crossbeam Off to the right-hand side of the image. So, like, this thing here, the thing that the witch is, like, the witch and the mad ones will run up and down. This thing here does not appear to be present in the image of Amelia, when we have Amelia there. Um, hey V, I am good, I am just, uh, doing my, my nerdy thing. So yeah, this, the wooden, like, crossbeam thing, that doesn't look like it's there. Like, it, it should be visible. Like, even if it's a little part of it, just from that angle. Near the hunter, you should be able to see the beam, and you can't. And if we remove that beam... Let's look at it this way. Uh, suddenly, you have a very, very big open space that is much more amenable to fighting a very, very large boss like Vicar Amelia, rather than the the sort of um, uh, compressed, sort of claustrophobic fight they're going for with the witch. So, it's possible, and, going back to our list of livers, because this is interesting. Go to our list of livers. So, Amelia's internal name is Laura. And, uh, because I'm using a different setup, I can't draw on this. So, we'll look there. There's St. Laura. And St. Laura is just referred to as St. Laura the Beast Saint. And these livers are in... They're in, like, the order you would get them in-game. So... 
So you can see that Laura is toward the end. Like the Witch of Hemwick is there. She's listed as Hemwick Witch. And then Laura's at the end and it's it's toward end game. So like it's you you, you have like Mikolash, uh Amygdala, and then Laura, and then like Cos who who became a Briatus. So she's not like early on. She's in the like the 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 end game sort of less linear portion. And um yeah, I I don't know where else she would be. So I'm and we know like from from notes and things that the game wanted you to go back to Hemwick when the game was ending. Like the way in which you you got to the um the nightmare areas was via Hemwick. Um, okay, Philippa asking about Hemwick. Hemwick, the original structure of the game, and by original I mean like really, 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 really early. So I don't know how much of this made it to the point where St. Laurie existed. But the the premise was you would start the game in Hemwick, go to Yarnum, and then at the end of the game you would go back to Hemwick again. And the the lake, hang on, I'll show you. I'll just run there while I'm talking. The lake... Actually, I won't. Fuck it. <laughs> you know what I mean. The lake behind Witch's abode would be how you got to the nightmare. So they want you to go back to Hemwick later on. And I think St. Laura might actually have been there. And the reason I'm talking about this is because she had the pendant. And the pendant in the DLC, you use that pendant to operate the lift that is the altar. So I'm wondering if the, the intended progression structure was that you would go back to Hemwick, encounter Laura, I don't know how, like, maybe the door was locked or something. Or actually, maybe she transformed under the Red Moon. That did that'd make sense. Um, yeah, you would encounter Laura, grab the pendant, go back to the, the, um, the cathedral, use the pendant on the elevator, and that's what would take you to the upper cathedral ward area. Because that would that would just make a lot of sense, and like I'll talk about Upper Cathedral Ward a bit more when I when I get there. Um, other stuff in Hemwick. So this is something that Lance dug up. He dug. There's a lot of like a lot of junk is just in Hemwick, because it was the first area they did. So there's just like tech. There's like test stuff lying around. So the thing I want to show off in Hemwick that is really interesting. Is. This is this is a still from a Lance stream. Um, it's one of his videos up on his channel. This is a coffin. Uh, it's an angle on a coffin. And that flower that's on the coffin is the flower that's on the doll's bonnet. It's the same kind. Um, it's like it's it's less bloom. It's not in blooms as much, but it's the same kind of flower. And knowing how much the doll changed, I'm pretty certain that that casket, if you see Lance's video, you can see the whole thing. That casket was the casket of the woman the doll was originally based on before they came up with Maria. And she would have been someone from like Canehurst or Hamwick because the two areas are connected. And yeah, you would have found her coffin and the flower would have been the giveaways to who it was. But I don't know where this went. Yeah, yeah, like an early Maria grave. Uh, is that it for Hemwick? It is, good. Okay. So, now, I'm gonna go to the dream. And I will show off some stuff in the dream. Actually, no, while I'm here, sorry. Aha, I knew, I knew, I came here for a reason. One of the things I brought up in, uh, the other stream is there's a note on the old map that says, like, you will encounter a dead hunter in Hemwick, and when you touch the hunter, that's what binds you to the dream. So when we talk about, like, Hemwick being the first area, initially, like, it was the first area, and you would find a dead hunter here, and touching that hunter, you would, like, absorb the hunter's, um, like, you would take on his, his hunt, his, like, uh, his, like, will, his, like, destiny to hunt would would be transferred onto you, and that's how you blink to the dream, and the hunter would be dead. We don't know if it's this hunter exactly. 
Um, it could have been any hunter, but the fact that there's a dead hunter in Hedwig, I'm like, yeah, it's probably this guy. And I'll show you why that's, like, the idea that you would use corpses to go back and forth from the dream. We're going to sit through a couple of loading screens, but I'll go back to the dream and show you. So here is the hunter's dream, and so this is uh, this is an astral lace discovery. The um, the characters and like reflective objects in this in this game, um, you don't kind of notice it initially, I think, because it's it's just something that your eyes accept as normal. They are all reflecting like a static image. There's like a static image that's set as like this is what you what object should reflect. And because of like that, the reflective image is still in the game. And I can show you what the reflective image looks like. So what that is, let's shove ourselves over here. That is, pop back a little, try to get a good angle on it. It's that. So, way, way before you used the gravestones by the stairs to warp, you would have used gravestones that were in a clump over by this tree, and you can see there that there's all of these corpses that are hunched over, they're like slumped by the graves. And this is what I mean about the game using corpses to warp. So like, as you progressed through, it looks like, um, I can show you an image of like, cause Lance got this partially restored, like the model is still there. Here we go. It's the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> Spoilers for later on. Um, here we go. So that's the model. Um, I think this is, this might be Laura as well who ripped this. Um, so you can see that the skull is like underneath them. And it, I think the idea is like, they would all have been there and then as you activated them, the skull would rise up. Like, it would rise up through the ground, and that's what would turn them on. Because you can see in the, uh... In the, the reflection map... Where is it? The skulls are, like, they look like they're there. Actually, they don't look like they're there. <laughs> I promise they look like they're there, because Lance, like, dug them up. Anyway. Yeah, that's the original uh, corpse warp thing. And an interesting thing about that position there is that... The, the very early, like, developer chalice dungeons that you can access, I can't do them because I'm on 1.0, so there's no way for me to, um, to go online or to make root chalices. But they will sometimes, hang on, I'll just make this invisible. Uh, usually if you use a chalice, when you walk back, you end up around about, like, here. Um, but, like, the... These weird, um... You end, you end up, like, here. The point is that, like, sometimes the developer root chalices. They... When you go back to the dream, you end up here, which isn't where you normally end up. And it's roughly where all of those skulls are. So it looks like that... That may have been, like, the early warp-in point. But yeah, these, um... The little, like, rows of tombstones that you warp from, that was, like... A later, a later concept, as were the, the chalice ones. Uh, oh, while I'm here, haha. Uh -huh. Um, this is, this is hot off the presses. The audacity presses. This is, 
Um, there's a lot of deleted dialogue from Lawrence and Willem. And I realized while I was looking through it that two sets of dialogue, if you line them up, they form a conversation. And I, I pasted them together and sent it to Lance. And then Lance was like, oh yeah, um, the, the IDs for those, those um, sound files, they're like linked to a cutscene that's not used. So this is an audio reconstruction of a cutscene that isn't used. And you can kind of guess what it is, um, but I'll play it first. So you're the first people to hear this. Wait for the LC to load. So you're intent on hunting beasts? <sighs> Even if they are... Yes, the hunt must go on. But German, why must you... It is all that keeps us human now. Farewell, Lawrence. I await the realization of your ministration. Indeed, German. It won't be long. So that, if you like, listen to it, it's structured identically to the Lawrence flashback that you get by touching the skull. But instead of him leaving Willem and Bergenworth, he's leaving German in the dream. So I'm guessing, like, this is just another Lawrence memory. There would have been another, another Lawrence memory that you found later on in the game. And, like, my own take on it is that there was probably, like, the bloodletting beast... It would have been something where, like, you killed the bloodletting beast and his head fell off and you got a second Lawrence memory. Because that memory there is, like, it's the last thing he would have done before he, like, became a beast and disappeared. It's him leaving the dream. And, um, yeah, apparently, like, I talked to Lance and he said, yeah, actually, the, the, um, the IDs for these, they're linked to a cutscene, so... It's possible he'll be able to restore it, but I'm guessing what it would have been is it would have just been like the Bergenworth flashback. And you would have just seen like this sort of shaky, cloudy, like, first-person view of German. From presumably Lawrence's POV. As he, as he left for the, the last time. So... Now I want to go... To, oh, um, Neil like he's pointing out looking for Lawrence. That's this is very confusing because the name Lawrence is thrown around. Um, to refer to multiple characters, this Lawrence is like Healing Church leader Lawrence, not um our buddy Lawrence. So now I'm gonna go fight Paul. Because Paul has, there's like an interesting thing about Paul. I wanted to leave him alive to uh, show, to sort of, like, jog everyone's memory of what this fight is like. So, yeah, Paul is is dead. The game is pretty clear about, like, yep, yeah, that Paul thing, that is undead. That is an undead dark beast. And they never really go into why that's important. So, let's just get rid of Paul. That is terrible performance, I'm sorry. Okay.
so Paul's name in the NPC parameters. Um, this isn't actually, I don't think it's literally Paul. I think it's like a clone of Paul because there's a ton of like clones of bosses floating around in this. And um, Paul is called, he's called Storm Beast Skeleton. But then in Old Yarnum, is where we're going now, there is a reference to a boss who is, who is called Storm Beast, but not Storm Beast Skeleton. So, what I think was going on here... Then it goes, will Jura be our friend? Let's find out. Anyway, what I think was going on here is that because what Mensis are doing is they're reviving all of these dead things in Yahagul, that the structure may have been that you fought Pal in Old Yarnum, and then after Pal died, when you went back, the Mensis ritual would have resurrected Pal's skeleton. So you had to fight Pal like an undead version. That's at least what it looks like from the um the way the NPC parameters are laid out. And uh, hang on, while I'm here, I will just show you. You may have noticed this when we did our living liver thing, but Paul does not have a liver listed. And Paul is very odd, because in, um, in this version of the game, I'm not going to do it, because I'm not going to go through, like, four hours of Chalice's life, but, um, Paul was, like, he's very, very weird. He will, he's referred to as, like, when you go down to the Chalices in the, the, like, patch version that was actually, like, properly released, Paul is called Lauren Dark Beast. But then, when you go in 1.0, Pal is called Pal, like in the chalices. The version you fight is called Pal. So it really looks like they kind of just grabbed a chalice dungeon boss or something like that, and they weren't really sure what to do with it. So he's he doesn't have a living liver, and he's not set up very well. But yeah, it looks like he was going to be an old Yarnum, and then he'd come back to life again. Will Jura be hostile? No, good, okay. Whatever. Uh, spare beasts. Cool. So the reason I wanted to meet Jura is because in the parameter files, there's lists of all the... There's NPCs and then, like, the summon version of that NPC, and they're slightly different. So, like, the Alfred that you meet... Like, just hanging around Yarnum and the Alfred you summon. They're technically two different characters. Um, there's just, like, the regular version and the summon version. And, um... All the summon versions, they have this, like, kanji next to them in brackets. It's, it's like... I forget the actual, the literal meaning, but it's something like, um... Uh... Like, combined force of arms or something. And it basically just means, like, you're fighting together. And there is a version of Dura that has that kanji next to it. So it very much looks like there was more to Dura earlier on. And he would have been, like, maybe siding with him would have let you summon him at some point. But I don't know for what. Uh, what am I wearing? I'm wearing the knight chest piece and the... Hunter set arms and legs. And uh, the best glasses. So, the reason I'm coming here, this will surprise and delight numerous people who are fans of uh, ugly, cute monsters. Is that this is a very odd altar. Um, a lot of people don't spend a lot of time here because you just fight the Bloodstarved Beast and leave, but it has these extremely strange statues in it, and they have these big upturned noses, and they seem to be turning into beasts, and the one over here, as you can see, it's got like 
this sort of like weird monster and it's got these weird noses and we were like here we go what what is going on here like these things are never really explained they never really talked about this just it's just odd and like the architecture of old Yarnum in general is very very odd so we're like okay it's maybe it's just ugly but people who who know me know where this is going when there was the data mining done there was an unused enemy found. And it's this thing. I'll just get the same angle. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Snuffles the pig boy. This looks like the origin of these statues was this deleted pig monster. And I think this guy over here has like a lump. Uh, oh, he doesn't. Yeah, they, this, um... Like, that could just be his head, but you can see that there's kind of, like, a lump. That roughly corresponds to where the horns would be. And, like, this this character, you might think, okay, this is just some random, random pig thing they made. No. No. They had plans for this thing, and I will show you. Uh, I'm going to show you something that, if you believe I made it up, I don't blame you. But, nevertheless, uh, this is, this is the old Project Beast loading screen. This is the very, very first loading screen that they ever used for this game. And it's the pig thing. And this concept art is not available anywhere else. This was data mined from the from the um the the TGS build from 2014. Yep, that is the pig boy, and he's got like the remnants of this armor. I talked about this I think during the Kuon stream, but yeah, it looks like it was like a knight, and he he transformed and it like burst out of the armor. And yeah, like, they, they loved this guy. They, like, had plans for him and, and nothing nothing happened. But yeah, he survives as these statues. The other thing in uh, Old Yarnum is there are a ton of Fumarians, I will show you. So... This is a cut character who's just called Old Yarnum Survivor. Um, here's an NPC. If you, the, he says he's down a well. I don't know what well. The well outside Erden Chapel might be a good spot for him because it's kind of on the way. Um, he has this wasn't recorded, but it exists like as text, and he says, "The town, meaning Yarnum, will not be spared. The Holy Chalice will curse them. It's the wrath of the old gods." Um. He says at one point that the beasts are the true form of man, which is like, it's kind of like, I think it's implying that like, becoming a beast is like you're going backwards in evolution, like, things all used to be beasts and then they took in the blood and they became Fumarians and, hum and then humans, but then if you take the blood in again, your body becomes malleable, you might go back to being a beast. But um, the most important thing is the last line where he says, um, don't disturb the tomb of the chalice. 
thence come the pale watchers all hollow and howling now obviously the pale talking about the pale watchers in the tomb that is so obviously fumarians and like this is something i can't show off because it's just in a big excel table somewhere but old yarnum has a ton of unused fumarians that are in the data um, Jesse asking what the valley is. The valley is where Old Yarnum is. Uh, I'll show you. If you look up, you can see that Yarnum, like central Yarnum, is above us. So they refer to Old Yarnum as the valley, because it's like, it's like the lowest part of Yarnum. But yeah, there's a ton of Thumerians for this area that are not used, but they exist. So, like, the, the guys with the lanterns and everything, they would, at some point, have been in Old Yana. And that absolutely fits what that guy is saying about the, um, the Pale Watchers coming out of the Labyrinth. The other thing that is in Old Yana is an enemy called the Burned Warriors. People might be familiar with them. Um... Here's one from the chalices. So they were like... They're basically Thumerians that are on fire. And... Yeah, they're, um, they're Thumerians that are on fire. But the early... Um, like, a whole lot of early areas have these things in them. They have them, like, it's not clear when they would have appeared, because at this point, like, stuff could, could be dynamically put in and out of the game. But, um... Hang on. CT7, I'm... No. Uh, sorry, someone is just uh, spamming with required, uh, wanting to be raided. So, hang on. Um, where are we? Yeah. And there is another item... That refers to called the ritual vestige. Here we go. A trin from I think it was Trin that dug this up. Um, this is an old chalice dungeon material, and it says vestige. Um, a perfect specimen surrounded by a faint flame. A vestige of the bizarre rites carried out by the labyrinth watchers. So there was something involving flame with the burned warriors. Like they would have. Um, there's some Thumerian ritual involving, like, burning bodies. And, I mean, I'll show you off when we, when we get to um, Yahagul, but Yahagul also has, like, it has the burning warriors, and they're tied to... In Yahagul, there's those burned corpses that will damage you if you touch them. They seem to be linked. Okay, QQalia of the Tomb Prospectors dug it. Thank you, QQalia. Um, and yeah, the, the remnant of that part of the story seems to be the, the, um, but yeah, the, yeah, I heard bring out the Bone Ash set. The Bone Ash set seems to be the leftover part of that, that like something about the Thumerians, they would immolate themselves as part of a ritual, but we never find out really what was going on, but it looks like it's something to do with summoning the moon because they seem to be doing it in Yahago when we get there. So, I can now... Let's go back to the Dream and go to Bergenworth. I guess, like, while things are loading... Um, I've done my usual time zone cheating thing, so we won't actually have to play Bergenworth. We can just go and meet Yarnum and, and uh, end it. Uh, just in case people are curious, like... Uh, where is it? Here's the original Forbidden Woods boss. Um, this is just a screen grab from something Lance did. To wear a big snake. Uh, that's why Forbidden Woods is full of snakes. And I'll, I'll talk about more like what the Shadows of Yarnum used to be uh, later on, but... I have a rough idea of what they were going for. Uh, what's that? More sneaky images. Oh yeah, here's a good one. This isn't shown off as much because it's not a boss, but like... 
the way the snakes are in the in the finished game is a bit like awkward. They just sort of like <laughs> giant balls of snakes burrow out of the ground and just attack you. Um, in the this is like a removed version of the snakes. They're much more natural. They're just like kind of naturally placed on the trees. Just trying to get through Bergenworth. Yeah, um, uh, Fabui bringing up Sekiro. Yeah, I think the, this, um, parts of Sekiro are like frustrated, um, things they wanted to put in Bloodborne and weren't able to. And we're going to be frenzied. And... Oh, we made it. Okay, good. So... The... The Gardens of Eyes are quite odd. Uh, obviously. There's a lot of questions about, like, what they are. Um, what was going on. So... Where did it go? Here we go. In the Alpha, this is a Lance uh, discovery, there is a Garden of Eyes at Yosefka's clinic. And it's one Garden of Eyes. And, like, I have looked at that thing in the parameters. And that Garden of Eyes has a different drop. Like, to the Garden of Eyes we meet at Bergenworth. So it's not... It's not designed to drop, like, sedatives or quicksilver. It's designed to drop something else. And I don't know what that thing is, but I have a suspicion that it might be this. So, kind of like the enlarged patient head in the DLC, there is an unused, like, Garden of Eyes head. That you could wear as a headpiece. Um, Neoloki asking if it's a special one. I think initially, because it's such an odd design and it's got this weird, like, rock thing. I think that it may have just been, like, there may have just been one. It may have been one unique enemy. And then when they, when they came to Bergenworth and they needed to, like, redo it, they just cloned it a bunch of times. Um, because, like, this area has a ton of, like, old Yarnum. It's got a ton of Thumerians. And that are, like, just in this area and aren't used. There's also the Celestial Emissary. Um, that is in this area and it's not used. So the exact, like, enemies they wanted for Bergenworth was always in flux. Um... I can also show you some, like, weird Willem concept art. People might have seen this because it's just in the in the um, the concept art book, but in case you're wondering, uh, Willem. I don't think Willem is weak to kin gems. No. Uh, why is this image so huge? Willem, I'll just do it this way. Willem used to be melting. He used to be melting like the Slime Scholars. Sorry, this image is gigantic. I can't scroll around it properly. But yeah, um, Willem, at some point, was going to be melty like the, uh, like the students. So, going back to our list of livers. Where is it? I've lost it because it's too small. Uh, might just hang on. I'll just delete this and add another one. My apologies. Here we go. 
Here's our odd list of livers. And you can see that Willem is listed under Ligarius and he's called Mikolash's Cast Off Shell. I have no idea what that means. Because <laughs> it still calls him University Professor. But yeah, he was a boss. And um, I can tell you, like, Lance is currently working on restoring the boss form, but I will play for you some of Willem's dialogue. So, like, I'll play it now and I'll tell you what I think's going on. Oh, eyes. Oh, eyes. Where are the eyes? I need more. I can't see. Fetch me eyes. Oh, faster, somebody. Oh, be they round, be they young. Fetch me eyes for my brain. More eyes. I need more. Go on, give me your eyes. So the way that he is talking there, um, that's like, I've stuck all that together. That's like kind of separate files. But he's basically has a bunch of lines where he would ask you if you had eyes. And I think the, the idea is that it was similar to Adeline in the DLC, where you would have to like, so back when Bergenworth was bigger, you'd have to run around Bergenworth finding eyes for him. And then when you gave him enough, he would become the boss. So I'll show you, like, uh, ritual materials. This has always, like, been odd to me. So there are these eyeballs that you get them in Hemwick. But then, like, they're in this very kind of nice glass and metal container. Because if you look at the other stuff, it's just, like, lying there, like... Like, there's a wrist, and, like, that's that's from the Healing Church. Then other stuff is just, like, there. Like, just here's some blood, here's some more blood, here's some mold. But then the eyes, which are apparently from Hemwick, there are that. So I think, like, the this might be left over from that, the way, like, Ber they, that looks like it's from Bergenworth. If we go down here. Like, it fits very, very closely with with the aesthetic here. That they have these eyes preserved in jars. So I'm wondering if if that design is is a remnant of you having to bring stuff to Willem. Anyway. Um. So yeah, Willem. Willem was a boss. Um. I'll show you this this animation he does. That there, that is like a recycled animation from he would shoot like these arcane blasts out of out of his staff thing. So like when he's doing this, that is like and he'd shoot this, like, laser out. And Lance is working on restoring that, so we'll... We'll possibly see it soon. Um, I guess before I leave, because Rom's dead, I just need to talk to Yarnum. Um, like, we covered this last time, and it's it's been pretty well known for a while, that the lecture hall was part of the Bergenworth map. And they just basically made it invisible and said it was in the nightmare. But in the um, in the the data, the stuff for that hall is called nightmare classroom, like from the beginning. So it looks like they kind of always did intended to have a link to the nightmare. And I don't know what the deal was. Maybe if you when you went inside, it would warp you to the um, the nightmare version of the classroom, or it was like a hunter's dream thing where you'd 
you'd encounter like the regular classroom in the nightmare one, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, yeah, Rom is dead already, so let's Um actually you can kinda of see here Yanam's uh lighting is is a bit odd. She's like almost entirely transparent. This is a 1.0 thing. I'll just blow it up. You can see that like she's almost like a ghost in comparison to the, the version we encounter. She's like transparent. There's a lot of like just strange sort of lighting changes. So let's go trigger the red moon. So yeah, we now have to run through, <laughs> run through Yahagul. Um, which version has better lighting? Well, this just has weird lighting. Some of it is more atmospheric, but some of it just looks extremely strange. And like, it, it doesn't react to the same... Yeah, Herbert, it, it's like, it's better lighting, but it's also incomplete lighting. So you will just get a lot of weird, like, lighting glitches. Even though, like, overall, it's sort of... It's a bit mistier, it's a bit, uh, crisper. So, unfortunately, we are now gonna have to run through Yahagol. So, like, I'll bring up a couple of, like, things in Yahagol while we're here. There is an unused church giant in Yahagul, it's the one with the cannon. And, um, like, it presumably would have functioned as, like, a sniper. Like, it would have just shot you as you ran through. But that obviously doesn't make it. I've got to make sure I grab the upper cathedral ward key while I'm here, because I don't want to have to go back here. Uh, this, this stream is live, yes. Um... The other thing is that some of those, like, the the sort of blood spectres, they have poison attacks, which they thankfully removed. I think because, like, poison in uh, Bloodborne is, is, like, associated with, um, like, corrupt blood. So I think the idea is that, like, they're made out of shitty old blood, so they're, like, they have an innate poison effect. Another interesting thing is that Mikolash's corpse puppets, the ones that he summons, um, they're the one that the ones that he revives. Those are here as well, and I don't know, because I always assumed those were those were for Kanehurst, because they look exactly like one of the guys in the portraits, and I always assumed, okay, well, there's the ghosts of the hem the ghosts of the women of Kanehurst, and then there's the physical corpses of the the men of Kanehurst are like being moved around like a puppet. Let's tag this. Maybe we should be fine. Yeah, there are Mikolash puppets in the chalice as well, but it's it's extremely... I think it's like one weird chalice someone made by accident and it's never been replicated. Um, I'll talk a bit about the cramped caskets. Uh, I'll just make... Like, we all know what these things are. Hang on. Okay, are we safe? We're safe. Okay. 
So those cramped caskets internally are called mimics. And that makes a fair amount of sense because they are just like a box that has burst into this giant mass of flesh and, and skeletons and things. And uh, they have a sort of mimic pose that is not used in game. It's there, but it's you never actually see it. I think oh, actually, I think it's possible to see it if you like. If you um, it's something Trin will know. It's something to do with like if you're summoned as hostile and then you like walk by them, they don't trigger yet, and you see this. But yeah, um, you can see like that's not really it's the in-game explanation of what they are is that it's like a. It's like a coffin that's just all the corpses have sort of spilled out. And it's dragging itself around. But if you look at that, that's not really a coffin. That's like, it's like a a crate. It's like, it's a, it's a cube. It's not a, a, like an actual coffin. And, um, because it turns out that the original idea behind these things is that they were mimics. They would be in the chalice dungeons. And you would think that they were a chest. And you would try opening them. And then the the hideous uh, like slime thing would burst out and try to kill you. And in some of like the uh, there's like early developer chalices that I can't access because I can't go online on this version. But um, when that happens, like you can see the um, there are dungeons that have like things running like those beasts sort of like there's there's uh, the 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 chests bursting open like these ones. And, um, I brought up these when I talked about the, the burned warriors. These, like, burned, um, corpses here. These seem to be connected to the burned warriors. Like, th these things would have been more significant early on. There's something to do with them. I don't know what the, the actual plan was. They're just kind of there. And yeah, Bloodborne, uh, yeah, it did used to have mimics, it doesn't anymore. So, just run through here and take out the one reborn. Like I said, I'm, I'm sort of annoyed that I can't, um... You can't have, like, multiple saves per character, because it saved me a lot of effort having to constantly... ...kill Rom and kill the one reborn every time I want to show off something. Hey, Astral Lace. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oops. Time for a not especially thrilling fight. Uh, I'm just gonna turn it down slightly because this thing went so good. <laughs> That's better. Okay. So... If you play Demon Souls, you'll probably recognize this setup as the exact same setup as Tower Knight. So Tower Knight was a, it's the, probably the second boss you fight in Demon Souls. And it's just a really massive knight who's fought in an arena that's shaped exactly like this. And you, you can't really damage it. But if you hit it on the back of the leg enough, eventually it triggers, like, it, it sort of triggers this thing where it falls over. And then you can hit its head. And that's how you damage it. And when this happened, people were like, oh, this looks a lot like One Reborn's arena, but this fight doesn't go very much like One Reborn. Uh, turns out it used to. So, hang on. You'll notice that, like, One Reborn's got two components. It's got the body, and then it's got the top part. And you can target them separately, and the... Turns out that... Didn't go through with it, but... I think we just... Yeah, this thing here. This would have been the way that you damaged it. Like, you would have made it fall forward just like Tower Knight, and then attacked the head. And then, I don't know why, maybe it just wasn't working, but they basically made you able to damage it from any direction. Instead of making you just target the head. Oh, 
I watched a, um, I think it was the top 100 scariest enemies in video games, and this was number one. I, I don't, I don't know what I would put for number one, but it, it never made that much of an impression on me. It's just like, like the rotten from Dark Souls 2, but slightly better. So yeah, this, this thing here where I'm bashing the head, that was like initially the way that you would, like, suppose to damage the thing. better. So, uh, stuff I showed off... This, I showed this off last time, but, like, there's 150 people watching, so they may not have been there. These statues, um, they don't really look like a statue, really. It looks like a giant tumor that is petrified, and they have, they have, like, a, a robe on. It led to this thing, it's like, well, this is a very odd design. What is this? And it turns out that these are, these were initially like an, not an enemy, but like a creature in the game. They were like these massively deformed sort of monster people. And they made these statues by just turning the animation off and coloring them gray. And that's why they look so organic. And I'll show you where they were. Because they were in Nightmare of Mensis. But um, before Nightmare of Mensis, I want to take a slight detour to the Nightmare Frontier just to show off a couple of things. Oh, hang on. This is interesting. Okay. So when we talked about this initially being part of Bergenworth, I will show you. I'm going to replace my Evelyn plus 9 with a Hunter Pistol plus nothing. Uh, and shoot these guys. Look how much damage that did. These things are pathetic in, in version 1.0. Like, they just... This is supposed to be a late game area, but they, they die to, like, anything. Like, this is, this is Evelyn. It, like, one-shots them. And I don't even have, like... Like good gems or anything. They just like they're just pitiful. And I'm assuming that is because this used to be part of Bergenworth. So they wanted them scaled to that area of the game. So for reference, that giant with the burning hands is called Franken-Nux, which sounds like a Pokemon name. I'm not going to be in the Nightmare Frontier for long, I just want to show off a couple of things here. So I'm not going to bother engaging with them because we all know what they are, but uh, there's two hostile hunters in like the swamp area. I'm going to take the lift down, but like everyone knows what I mean. There's the two guys in the swamp that attack you. Um, because like I was saying with, um, with uh, Vile Blood Drifter Leo, we have the data of like every character's like face if they use the default human model. Here is what they use, and you'll notice that they have, like, this is, this is from, like, before there was DLC and everything. They have the blood drunk eye. Like, they actually bothered making that. That's presumably why Bloodborne, for seemingly no real reason, has the ability to set different colored, like, separately colored eyes. It's because they wanted this whole, like... The concept of, like, something goes wrong 
that like screws with your eyes and one of your eyes goes like weird yeah that seems to be why they added it because they always had that idea even before they they introduced like volta and everything um this area internally you'll see it sometimes referred to as being called hometown i don't know what that is over there it's almost, like maybe the winter lantern fell in the swamp i don't know um this area sometimes gets called hometown And, um, that's, like, the name it has internally, you can say it's Hometown, but the name is more like, um, like, the place of origin. Or, like, the place of beginning. Because if you, if you spoke about your hometown, you'd be like, oh, I'm from this place, so it's, like, my place of origin. So, like, it sometimes gets called Hometown, but it is called, like, the place of origin. That's a, probably a better name for it, because it's, uh, whose hometown is this? I don't know. Um, and, like, again, the Burning Warriors, who show up everywhere, are in here. And they're not used. They're just, they're just there. Because I, I assume, like, the same weird ritual is meant to have gone on here. Um, the thing I really want to show off is... I've talked about this before, but I haven't properly demonstrated it. This is an area, uh, like Hemwick, that makes significantly more sense if you do it backwards. If you imagine we start here. As you left, you would see in the distance, like on the rock, you get this very nice vista of the Nightmare of Mensis. It's just straight there. So you would have started here and climbed up. And that, I th if you look at it that way, a lot of this area makes more sense because you've got like... There's this big swamp that you never go to. You have this, like, cliffside path you'd have to climb to get up. And then, like... Let me go up here. This would probably have been, like, a shortcut to the top. When you come out here, like... Like, you, you feel like you've scaled, like... You've scaled a mountain to come up here. And there's a bunch of weird kill planes here. Because a lot of the, like, the drops down the side you should really be able to make. Like, based on other drops you can make in the game. Like, that shouldn't... These drops shouldn't really kill you, but they do. And it's because there's just, like, a kill plane there. So, yeah, you probably went up here and then, like, there's this place. And this probably just led to, uh, to Mensis, which at the time was called Trap Road. So, okay, let's go to Mensis now. Actually, I'll just repair so I don't want anything breaking on me. Using a Chicago, they don't have great uh, durability. Where would Amy be? At this point, Amygdala is like... Amygdala was the final boss at one point. Like, they do a lot of, of musical chairs with who is who. And how much damage barehanded does to these? God, look at that! Look at that! That wasn't even R2. Like, this is R2. That's like half its health. Your yeah, last protagonist saying Trap Road is like obstacle course. Yeah, um, uh, Trap Road is like a Japanese term. It's applied to like basically difficult obstacle course style areas. Um, like if you, I, I 
looked at like like Japanese Dark Souls fan sites will call Sen's Fortress Trap Road. And there's like Mario levels that in Japan are called Trap Road, like Bowser's Trap Road. What indicates Amy was the final boss? Um it's like the the way that it is like it's called like the Fallen Angel of God, and there's all these like it sort of builds to that point, and then it just, all, it, at the end, it became, like, a side thing. And there's all these different, like, amygdala variants that aren't used. And all these different poses and things. And, like, the reason everything looks like amygdala is because it was, like, building to the big reveal. But, like, I'll go over, like, the various final bosses as we go on. Ugh. Okay. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you. So this is going to be like... The problem with, with looking at Mensis is there's a giant frenzying brain. But um, this is like... That's the wet nurse's Lunarium. So I will show you... Some concept art. Where is it? Actually, no, I'll, I'll, um, go a little further around here, hang on, to get a better look at, uh, where we are. There we go. Big shelter here. You can see a rough idea of how Mensis is constructed. As we see it now. So, like, this is the concept art. Again, it's very large, I have to shrink it. You can see that, like, it's much, much bigger in the concept art. Like, it's a much taller structure. Um, it almost looks like, in order to make the, the Wet Nurse's Lunarium, they just, like, sawed that thing in half. And that's where the arena comes from. The other thing about this is that, like, in the middle where the brain is, focus on, you can see there's, like, it almost looks like stairs around it. And I don't know what those, those were or are, but, like, yeah, it's almost like there's separate, um, like, another way of getting up there that's not used. Anyway. So I'm now going to run past. Um, do I have any sedatives? Oh dear. Okay. I'm going to run past. Um, I don't want to, like, you'll just have to notice this as I do it. When I run past, I'm going to get frenzied. And because of the way the, the frenzy spikes work, you will see that, like, they will appear on me and they will they will disconnect from my body. So I will actually leave like a line of frenzy spikes behind me because they don't attach properly. See there. Like they just sort of stay behind and clip through the camera. Um, Eric asking if that's the angle. No, it's like they, they have, like, cut that thing in half. It's not, it's not the angle. It's hard to get an angle because, like, if I stand on the bridge, we'll get frenzied to death. But, um, yeah, there's, like, a bunch missing from Mensis. Just trying to de-aggro Edgar so I don't get chased during this.
Okay, good. We're safe. So, the the silver people here, what they're called in, like, in-universe is Murgo's attendants. And the idea is that they're attending to Murgo. Murgo is held captive in Mensis, and they're looking after him. I guess they're trying to get him back or something? I don't know. But, um, the internal name for them is Jailer. So, like, obviously this area, if you know Demon Souls, it takes a lot of cues from the Tower of Latria. Because Tower of Latria has those, like, the cage lifts and everything, and Latria is a big prison. So, these things, they're called jailers, because I guess they were meant to be keeping people in the cages here, and the cages are now full of books. So, like, here's a cage, and you can see that, like, there's nothing in that one. Oh, there's, like, actually, there's a pile of corpses there, just proving my point. Um, like, all around here. Like, they're just meant to be, like, like, attending to the prisoners here, but the prisoners don't really exist anymore. Let's get rid of this thing. Sorry, this is appalling. I'm very high level, but I haven't been farming for gems, so... We're starting to hit the point where stats aren't that important. Alright, good. So... You can see these all have books in them. I was like, why, why did you put... Books in a jail cell. Did the books do something wrong? Are they banned books? What is going on? So. Ah, uh, hang on, there's another one. Okay, so what used to be in those things? Yeah, they do wear armor that's similar to uh, Kanehurst, because they are, like, they're, they're Thumerians. <laughs> yes, Laura's suggesting they're all copies of how to pick up fair maidens. It is possible. But the, in, the original inhabitants of the cells were... The statues from Yahagol. Like, when they were an entity, they were in these cages. I think the idea being that they were, like, people who had been held captive in the nightmare. And, like, over time they had, they had mutated into these strange, like, piles of organs and tumors. And that's what was being held captive here. And now they're just, like, and these were alive. Like, these are still images, but these used to move. They would, like, pulsate and make weird noises, and you could kill them. And yeah, that's what was in the cells originally. And, um, they made them books now. Because, why not? Am I a consumer of cheese? Do you mean actual cheese or, like, cheesing video games? Because uh, too much cheese makes me sick, but in video games I cheese everything. And I will try to cheese Mikolash. So these are Mikolash's puppets. Um, I've brought this up a few times, but they, they look exactly like one of the portraits in Kanehurst. 
to the point where, like, I'm pretty sure they were designed for there originally. Anyway, here is uh, Mikolash 1.0, who has a number of problems. Uh, this may go on for a while because his pathfinding is kind of weird. Yeah, there we go. His pathfinding here is, is alright, but then in the second phase, his pathfinding gets kind of weird. Um, his puppets revive a lot faster on 1.0. See, like, it's already back. Like, they're, he's really fast. The lighting is also different, uh, as is a lot of the areas in this. So as you just saw then, like... Let's let them finish talking. Okay, whatever. Um, so, you'll notice there that, like, in um, subsequent versions, once he goes into phase two, he just sort of, like, blinks out of existence, and you can't keep damaging him. But in this one, you can see that I just stun-locked him, and I took him down to, like... Like, half... Like, he's down to, like, uh, a quarter of his health right now. So here's the big change. Um... Uh, there. There's a, like, a... There's a drop here that will kill you. Like, there's usually stairs here, but on this version. There's no stairs. So if you if you go off slightly, you will just fall to your death. And like this boss fight drags on for an eternity, so I imagine that was very fun. Oh he so he sometimes gets into a weird loop where instead of going out of his mirror, he will like fall out of the sky. So I want to see if I can get him to do that. Yeah, there we go. I want to see if I can poison him. Because he used to have a very strange reaction to poison because of the way his teleport works. Uh, where are we? Oh, I want poison knife. Give me poison knife. Okay. If you can poison him, he just, like, goes into this weird seizure and teleports on the spot over and over again. Anyway, this, this fight has never been good on any version. I hate it. And now he's disappeared. But you know, it could have been worse. These things could have revived as fast as they are now. Oh, 
Oh, for God's sake. Oh, there he is. Come back here. Just die! There. I guess I'll just show off this cutscene, because this, this plays if you kill him outside of his arena, so a lot of people don't see it. But yeah, you get this slightly different one where, uh, instead of it showing your character react, it just cuts to this. So speaking of beloved characters, let's go meet the Bloody Crow. So the Bloody Crow, the problem is I can't like test this because everything auto saves and I can only have one cloud save at a time, but um, the Bloody Crow, at least in my experiments with the unpatched version, is horribly, horribly glitched. And just, like, does not... Sort of, I think he spawns outside the map and just dies. It's very odd. Like, if this... If this worked, um, Eileen will be... Eileen will be by the stairs and she'll talk like the Bloody Crow is there. We'll go in. And... He will just die. Like, he'll just, his death will trigger, there won't be a corpse. And then, because we didn't technically kill him, we can't complete Eileen's quest, and she just sits there. Like, forever. And there's no way to actually end it. She just keeps saying, like, don't go in there. But, I mean, because this is so random, I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, okay, Blood Drake. I think that Blood Drake is a sign that the crow died. Here's an example, uh, just there, of, like, the geometry loads really slowly. And you can kind of use that to your advantage in some places by making the, um... There's some places where a door won't load if you're fast enough and you can just run through. Oh, here, okay, Eileen's here, right. So we get our usual. Now, that blood drag that we got, I think that was the crow dying. And, yep. Yeah, um, the crow is just dead. And the crow leaves blood rapture, as usual. So you'd think, oh, I guess the bloody crow is dead? So Eileen's quest is over, but if we talk to her... Oh yes, the Dweller is alive. I'll go back and check. She just says nothing. So, like, the crow just, like... So, actually, I'll show off this while I'm here. We got a blood drag from killing the bloody crow. But... Not all of the hunters give you a blood drag. And I think it's to do with when they were added to the game. Because we know that this area here, this, like, little plaza, um, that was added, like, much later on, and it doesn't quite correspond to the geometry when viewed from other places, but... 
these guys. See, no blood drag. And it's the same for this guy. Die, God. Okay, so yeah, you see, we got we have corruption equipped, and we got a blood drake when the crow died somehow, but we don't get it from these. And like, I talked to Lance about this, and he said that is because. Um, all the blood dregs in the game, they, they're like hard-coded. So instead of it just being like a switch where it's like, oh, this character drops a blood dreg, each blood dreg has to be individually tailored, like every time it's, um, it's designed. Like every time they, they add one. And like, I guess they just didn't, didn't add it for, um, that character yet because they were added later on along with that little plaza area. Uh, you know, let's go check on the Dweller. Because I did- I wonder if I can get another Blood Drake by killing the Dweller again. Also, I think this is the, um, Ariana should be in the sewer, because I left her alive. So yeah, dead, dead, dead. But, yeah, the Dweller is alive again. Oh! Yeah, he's acting like I sent the, um, the suspicious beggar here, even though I didn't. I didn't even meet the suspicious beggar. Yeah, that's, like, all messed up. I did not know that happened. And I don't get a second blood drug. Hang on, what level form was Erden is that? Oh, it's three, okay. Yeah, so, like, Ariana is also glitched, like, in a similar way, but... I don't know how to, like, control... Oh, okay, she's here. Does she have any other dialogue? How did he resurrect? I think it just reset him. Because the game knows I've killed him. Because I got his blood drag. Well, I'll at the end of this, I will restore from the cloud and everyone will come back to life. Uh, Where are we at now? Uh, well, we can we can check the area another time. This is, like, not a... I can just run through this when I feel like it, because I'm on level bazillion. Okay, let's go to Upper Cathedral Ward. It should now be available. Oh yeah, I'll show off a little bit of that plaza from here, actually. Uh, let's give us the Manola. This is something I forgot to show off before. So if we look at the plaza, you can see instead of there being a, um, a well, there's like a gargoyle. And over to the right, there's like a wooden bridge. 
And if you look down even further, there's like some stairs and another bridge. So like that, we, we talked about this in the last stream, but there was originally a completely different way you got to Yahagul. And it was like via the workshop. It was very strange. But yeah, you can see like remnants of it in this area because they haven't updated the... Um... Okay, Beautiful Bear in a Tutu. Vodka is referring to... Um, Ariana has a cut line. I'll just explain it now because I'm going to have to run to up a cathedral ward. Ariana has a cut line where she says like, my beautiful baby... Like she sort of like coos over the, the weird slug thing. She has like, isn't he gorgeous or something like that. And, um, it was cut and didn't show up. And then there was, there's this guy who's kind of infamous at coming up with like bizarre theories that don't mean anything, that have just come out of his head. Um, uh, the most recent one, he claimed that there was a hidden mechanic called blood tendency that was tied to the number of times you heard the bell chime, but also it could be reduced if you were hit by a snatcher. Like, just, just like, berserk nonsense. Or that, like, there were green ashes that fell from where we are now, and that hinted at there being a separate, like, unfound, like, side quest, and he at one point claimed that, um... There was, like, a Mirror Universe Bizarro Yana. But anyway, he actually had video evidence of him getting Ariana to say that line. Like, he, he got it, and we don't know how he did it. And it's like, of all the people in the world to have triggered this thing, it was that guy who thinks everything is like Miyazaki's ninth dimensional chess. And that everything is planned. <laughs> no, it wasn't on, it wasn't on Ethico, it was a guy called Noroi Karase. And like Yeah, it was just just of all the people to have triggered this, it was that guy. <laughs> like, yeah. There was um there's a scene in The Simpsons where like you might know when, when they put Homer in witness protection and the two FBI agents are trying to coach him. On, on responding to the name Mr. Thompson, and they're just getting more and more frazzled, and, like, that was Meth and I trying to get him to explain what he did. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, while we're up here, uh, this. I remember the first time I played Bloodborne, I was fairly convinced that, okay, this... <coughs> this is clearly a shortcut, because... There's like, there's a gate here. You can see if you follow the gate around, connects to this bridge. So obviously, like, at some point I'm going to unlock that. And I never did. And then I realized that you can't. But, um, <laughs> that is, again, a leftover piece of geometry. So I'll show you. Uh, where is it? Uh, here we go. So this is a very, very, very early map of Upper Cathedral Ward. And, hang on, I'll just blow it up a little more. You can see, like, there's the bridge in the middle. So, you can see it, it actually did used to go all the way along. It, it went, like, you, I'll put it so it's facing the, the top right corner. It went all the way around there, and there's, like... Yeah, there's like a... that you would have entered through there. There's like buildings there. You would have somehow gone up. So that's where that's from. Like it did... it did used to be a bridge. They just uh, removed it. Yeah, a lot of uh, people remembering encounters with Noroi Karase in the chat. So... Yeah, that's... that's that bridge. Um... The way it's connected to the Healing Church workshop's quite awkward. Like, you can sort of tell, like, there's a very, very nice bridge connecting here, but the way you do it is this little, little stairwell. It's connected, for some reason, to this building. 
And if you look around, like it, it's just sort of being being jammed here. So like we don't know initially like exactly how it worked, but that's why there's a bridge there. That was the original means of getting to the upper part of the cathedral. So try to run through upper cathedral ward as fast as possible. Because I want to show off the emissary. The emissary on 1.0 is like quite badly bugged. And it doesn't necessarily get harder, but it is like I mean weird stuff sometimes happens, but it, it's also sort of random whether it happens or not. So I'll, I'll see if it happens. Uh, hopefully it will. Might just equip the uh, Tenitrus, tiny Tenitrus. Oh, when when Neroy finally got banned from Tomb Prospectors, I was I was despondent. Uh, whoa, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. The, um, the grab, like, arcane thing got me while I was on the ladder. Now I get the suck. No, Naroy, Naroy was banned. I did ask Trin to unban him. <laughs> but it's her server. Um, hang on, let's get rid of this guy. Alright. So, one of the things that we discussed on the cut map stream is that Upper Cathedral Ward clearly has three floors, but we only ever go to the second floor, which is the floor we're on now, and we're like, well, what was what was going on? Where's the other? Like, how did that originally work? So I can I can show you. Because uh, like, there's an old old map that was found in Dark Souls Remastered, and someone got it working in Grand Theft Auto Five, and they stuck a texture on it so I can show you. So, because of the way this is set up, I can't draw on it like last time, but. Where we are now is like where that um the uh the the ladder comes out. You can see there's like a ramp. It's on the right hand side in the middle. Those stairs, I'm pretty sure they were Hang on, let's uh So if we keep in mind where the stairs are, they're like off to the side, and I think they were probably where I am now. Like this part here. That looks like it's where the the stairs would have been initially. And then you can see they go up, and that's what would have got you access to floor two. Why is it in Grand Theft Auto Five? It's just the the map format worked. I don't know. There's actually a uh, a video up of like they ported it in Grand Theft Auto Five, and you can run around it. You can drive a car, you can hang glide. <laughs> but yeah, that looks like where I am now is probably where the initial way to get to the, the third floor was. And they just removed it. Let's just clear this place out. Yeah, it was in Dark Souls Remastered, because um, Bloodborne started development during the Dark Souls DLC, during Artorias of the Abyss. So as a result, a bunch of, like, 
Bloodborne sort of test assets are in that game. Uh, in the same way that, like, there's Bloodborne assets in Dark Souls 3 as well, because they were doing them, like, roughly at the same time. Okay, I'm trying to make the weird thing happen, which I think involves getting the Scourge Beasts aggroed. I don't exactly know. Um, I sound a bit like Naroi here, but I have actually experimented with this, so I have a rough idea of what happens. I think it's to do with what order you encounter the enemies in, because they must be kept in a queue or something. So, let's see if this works. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, it seems to be, because we've got a dead Scourge Beast in the Lumen Flower Gardens. We've only got a dead one. Okay, so what, what can sometimes happen with the Emissary? On 1.0 is that it picks up, like, enemies that it aren't Celestials, and it tries summoning them. So you can see there, there's like a dead Scourge Beast. That is because, like, it's just grabbed one, like, from the area. So I was trying to encounter them, because I think it's to do with, like, the order that you see them in. Like, they must be kept in a queue or something. But yeah, there it is. And, like, it's possible for it to summon live ones. And if you, if you get it to summon the live ones, then, like, yeah, it, it's the Emissary, but it's constantly summoning Scourge Beasts. Um, the Mate Contact gesture, I didn't bother getting it because I don't care about the Mensa's brain on this run. Just... So yeah, like, if that had... I don't know, I don't know how to actually manipulate it, but, like, we could have had Scourge Beasts being summoned. Yeah, there's, like, that's the closest I'm gonna get, is there's a dead one. Um... Uh, does it mean the boss is summoning from another part of the area? I don't know. But it's, like, I think it's just, like, a... Like, a, the, it keeps them in a queue, and then it just grabs them from the, the queue that it puts them in. So the reason I came up here is, like, I've talked about there being a lift. Um, I'll show it on the way back, I guess, but, like, the lift, the door is here. Obviously, you can't see it anymore, but that would have been a lift, and it would have gone down to the other side of the Grand Cathedral. If you want to see that, there's, like, an earlier stream I did where I showed off where that would have been. Uh, what other images do I have of this place? Yeah, Herbert just brought up the lumen flowers being open at night. I will show that off. Uh, so there is artwork of the lumen flowers being open at night. that one there we go so you can see that like they had plans for the lumen flowers to open at some point and you can see also that the um there's the art for lumen flower gardens and it's not the lumen flowers we have now they look like they're the ones from the nightmare frontier that are sort of like like bent over and weeping flowers So that's like, yeah, I don't know. 
So we talked about like boss roulette. So I will show you like kind of what I mean. Uh, actually, uh, no, no, I'm just, it's fine. I was gonna restart Elgato, but like we're only lagging by a couple of seconds. So let's go back to our liver list. And it's disappeared. Good. Stop again. Well, I, I, I can fill you in uh, when I get there. As to what was going on. Okay. So you'll see there that in the list of living livers, German is called, he's second from the bottom, he's called Ibriatus's Inheritor. Because at this point in the game, Ibriatus is the name of the Moon Presence. So keep that in mind. Here is some more removed dialogue. Let's wait for it to open. Up with something of a nightmare, have you? Oh, but I've nothing more to tell. I only show the way. And the way has been shown. Now, it's in your hands until the dank, sweet mud takes us all upon the awakening of Ebritus. <laughs> so he calls her Ebritus. But it, clearly it's, it's Ebritus. It's the character we know as Ebritus. We've been calling her Ebritus since 2015, so it's Ebritus. Um, and keep in mind, at this point, the moon presence is called Ebritus. And he's talking about Ebritus. And Lance has found in Upper Cathedral Ward, there is a version of the Moon Presence that could be summoned and, like, presumably fought in this area. So I think the whole, like, flora of the Moon thing, like, she was more explicitly connected to the Lumen Flowers. It, there was something about the flowers and opening in the Moon and that being responsible for Ibriatus slash Moon Presence appearing. And um yeah, we won't we won't bother actually fighting a breed just because you know you know who she is. Uh so let's go back to Mensis and finish this off. Well, German being linked to Cosm is like that was added in the DLC. Like there's a, a lot of stuff, yeah. And yeah, that was the blood minister that you see in the opening cutscene. Uh, he would have hung around, and you would have been able to talk to him. Okay, it, um, Elgato is chugging a bit. So I might just uh, turn it off and turn it on again. The correct way to deal with all problems. Uh, someone asking if the concept art's on the wiki. It's on the Bloodborne wiki. If you go to bloodborne-wiki.com, um, there's just like a tab that says Art of Bloodborne. And if you click that... I'll just put something up while I'm talking. Um, if you click Art of Bloodborne, that has like all that concept art scanned in high definition. That's where I got those images from. Put this, uh, better. Okay, see you, beautiful Baron of Tutu. I'm just rebooting Elgato. We're almost done. Um, if you're interested in, like, early stuff as well, the wiki has, like, um, complete comparisons of, like, every, literally every single difference between the, the alpha and the version we got. So, like, Every item that is different, every piece of text that is different, every removed piece of architecture, like, it is all there. Uh, and I know, because I sat there for, like, an entire weekend and documented everything. Okay, here we are. So let's go meet the witness. 
Well, German is linked to the orphan now, but like at this point, there is no orphan. If you see what I mean, like it's a um, it's an earlier draft of the story. Yeah, the um, the all the inventory items are there up there in high res. Um, I don't think there's anything that isn't up there at this point. So run past the shadows of Yarnum. Um, the shadows of Yarnum, we'll go into them later on, but like, they didn't start out as the shadows of Yarnum, they started out as something else. And there is an unused variant. There's a, an unused shadow of Yarnum who has a gun. And, um, that's all I can tell you. There is a version that's just got a gun. I don't know how it would have behaved, but it exists. So yeah, the idea behind the Shadows of Yarnum is that they're like Queen Yarnum's agents. But that's... That's the version we have now. Uh, they didn't start out that way. I'm just going to open the shortcut in case something goes wrong. So let's go meet the wet nut. Is there a site with Dark Souls 3 cut content like there is for Bloodborne? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. The Bloodborne wiki is like, it's a... It says it's a wiki. It's really a personal project by, like, one person. And, um... Who, like, does 98% of the work. And then, like, Trin and I, like, contribute stuff. So, yeah. Um, I'll go back to the concept art. For Mensis. And show you. Yeah, you can. Yarn, uh, last protagonist pointing out Yarnum's ring. You can see Yarnum wears the ring of betrothal. Because she is married to a great one. But we don't know which one. Where did I put the concept out? Here we are. So, like, where we are now... Like, we're facing from the other side. The, that, like, um, like, we're, we're roughly in the center of, of where it is now. So you can see that there is this, like, huge, almost like Tower of Babel kind of construction. That goes all the way up, and that was just, like, deleted. Presumably to make this arena. So, go fight the wet nurse. So, yeah, if you're, um, familiar with, with Bloodborne, it will be like, boss is kind of random. What is this? <laughs> Why do they say it's uh, a great one? And all will be revealed, uh, what this thing used to be. You see, like, she's got, like, animations for being staggered, but they don't do anything. And if you're, like, suspicious, it's like, yeah, this, uh, this was something completely different originally, and they just sort of, like, uh, oh, um, it's Mogo's Wet Nurse now. I wonder if we can dodge out of her darkness attack. We may die before she does it. So, like, the Wet Nurse has an attack that makes everything go, um... Like, you get this, like, dark effect on the screen and she clones herself. That is actually, like, because that's an attack... You can dodge it. You had Your iframes can avoid that. I can't do it, um, consistently, but, like, if you want... If she starts doing that attack and you dodge at the right time, your iframes will just block it. Bye-bye. 
So. How much did you miss? You missed quite a bit, but the VOD will stay up. So don't worry. You can watch it back later on. We're about three hours in. We're almost at the end. So let's look at our list of living weapons. And it's disappeared again. So here's our livers. We have... So we're at the end of the game now. So the final three bosses here are... Um, Koz. Ibrietus' Inheritor and the Moon Messenger. So you'll notice the wet nurse is not there. So at this point, Koz, that boss, that's Ibrietus. That's the boss we know as Ibrietus. And from what we can tell, she would have been fought in this space. Like, she would have been... So like, that's why um, Mikolash is like, Cos, Cos, or some say, Cosm, do you hear our prayers? Because he's summoning Cos. So he would have succeeded with Murgo to summon Cos. Cos, at this point, Ibrietus would have, like, flopped out of the sky and you would have fought it. Um, Ibrietus' inheritor is German. That's like... Because, you know, German's working for the Moon Presence, who at this point is called Ibrietus. And the Moon Messenger is the Moon Presence, who is Ibrietus. We clear on that? Okay, good. So, where was the Wet Nurse? The Wet Nurse is... Lesser Demon of Death and Darkness. In the middle of the screen. So, we know this... For sure, because the wet nurse's internal name is Lesser Demon of De like that's actually what she's called in the files. So that was that was how she was conceived of. That was the idea behind it. And um, I brought up the Shadows of Yarnum earlier. The Shadows of Yarnum, their internal name is like Death and Darkness Brigade. And you'll you might you probably if you've thought about it you've thought hey the the wet nurse she looks like a giant shadow of Yana like it's the same like cloak it's the same sort of basic um, structure thing she's just really big and has a bunch of different arms so the shadows of Yana whatever the hell they were they started off as the wet nurses like guards or something like that they like worked for the demon of death and darkness. And the spider people who hang around Mensis, they are called, like, devotee of death and darkness. So they also apparently, like, worshipped the lesser demon of death and darkness, who is, you'll see her sometimes called the succubus. But that's, again, that's like Google, the way Google Translate sort of tries to intelligently learn terms. Her name is Dream Demon. But, like, succubus is one way you would define dream demon so people call her succubus but dream demon is how it's written so that's who she was and you can see like this is a list of of living livers she is i'll put it next to my head so you know where i'm pointing she is in between snake ball which is the boss of forbidden woods and Marta Lagarius. now this is all in roughly the order that you would encounter them, because he goes like Gascoin, Cleric Beast, Hemwick, blah blah blah, and then like um, Willem, Rom, One Reborn, Mikolash, blah blah blah. So you would have encountered her like mid game. So, what is the story behind encountering her mid game? Okay, what if I told you? that there was a human version of her in the game. So this, this is an unused character. And she looks pretty much exactly like 
a human version of the wetness. This is from Santa Disca, you can tell because of the um the little logo. There's another angle on it because Lance also got her to spawn. Ah, uh, you can see I accidentally showed this off before. Here she is. Like this is what she would have looked like in game with lighting. She's like this this creepy old lady who looks like the wet nurse. And someone's saying, is she the nurse from the start? Yeah. The reason that she is loaded into Yosefka's clinic is that she was originally the Yosefka character. She was a character you would meet at the very beginning of the game who would tell you that, like, oh, this is an earlier version of the story. She'd be like, oh, yeah, you've ministered, you've been in a coma for a while. Um, here's what happens, stay inside. Like, there's, like, uh, lycanthropy, like, werewolves about. Um, yeah, something is like, like, she she's, like, look, looking after you. And, okay, so, remember that Forbidden Woods connects to the clinic. I'll show you. This is the old way it connected. I mentioned this, but I didn't show it off last time. So, like, this is the early courtyard. This is, like, right in the game as it is now, this is this is where there's the, um, like, the pile of, of graves and the ladder that goes down. And, like, the, you can see there's, like, a, a miscolored part of the, um, of the ground. That's because that's, like, not, it's not meant to be there. That's, like, that's actually the opening of a tunnel. And I'll show you the tunnel. It only shows up from, from certain angles. There you are. So it would have gone all the way down here. And, like, it's, it's, like, yeah. It's, like, a much grander sort of entrance to the, to the underground part that connects to Forbidden Woods. And let's go back to the other one. Uh, you can see that there's like, there's like corpses by it. And yeah, so, again, let us go back to our living liver list. Let's look at where she is. So, remember, you get into the clinic via Forbidden Woods. So where is the Dream Demon? The Dream Demon is right after the Forbidden Woods boss. It's like in between Forbidden Woods and Bergenworth. And it's also where um, it's like aligned with um, Marta Ligarius. And the way you get to Marta Ligarius is you go back through the clinic and you get the Hemwick summon. You get the, the Kanehurst summons. So they're like next to each other. So I'm pretty certain at this point that, like, you would have gone back to the clinic and, like, I, like, right now you go back to the clinic and you find out that the imposter is doing all these horrible experiments. But it looks like at this point you would have gone back to the clinic and instead of, because there's no Yosefka at this point, the, the, like, kindly old lady who was looking after you at the start is, like, revealed to be this, this horrible, like, dream monster. And for all we know, like, that that may have tied into the whole, like, why you become a hunter, why you get menaced, all this other stuff. So, yeah. That's why the wet nurse looks like a giant shadow of Yana, because they were originally different things. So it's just, uh, we are almost done. Let's just head back. Did I miss anything? I don't think I did. Oh, I, actually, I did just remember something I wanted to show off. Um, the blood gems work differently. The values are calculated differently. So I'll just show you. I've got the tear stone from the doll. So let's just use it. Now we'll look at the tear stone. So I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see. That's not how I make it bigger. HP continues to recover 3.2. 
So in the base game, that is hit points can that is hit points recover two, and all of the gems that have hit points recover are calculated differently. So if we sc scroll up, um, you can see that one's plus zero point six. So it's all calculated differently, and like basically the um. All regen is halved after 1.0. They, like, recalculate it so it's half as useful. Um, started in Hamwick. Yeah, there's different versions of the story. Like, the very, very first version you start in Hamwick. And then, like, by the time of the alpha, they introduce the concept of you starting in your Sefka's clinic. This is what I mean about, like, there's multiple iterations of the story that all, like, went through slightly different versions. Um... So, now I'm going to show off German. German, I'll, I might actually just let German kill me. Because, uh, I want to show off some, actually it doesn't matter, I'll just, yeah. You know, I don't mind, I ha I've mentioned things multiple times because people are like, showing up and leaving because it's been three hours. I don't blame anyone for not sticking around for the whole thing. Uh... Um, so here's German. Dude, he's got one leg, he's in the wheelchair. And, um... If we refuse, you can see that. Now this is... This is something people, like, have remarked upon since the game came out. And it's that during this cutscene... German's model completely changes. He starts off as as his like old sort of feeble self and then when he moves to get up he becomes like becomes significantly larger, he gets a new hat, he gets a new coat. And um people like not not unreasonably figured it's like oh okay, um German is going back to like his his youth. I mean, he was never very young from what we can tell, but like this is like German in his prime when you finally like encounter, when he when he's, he's like going back to how he was uh, during his hunter days. I don't have anything to say about this fight because I want to show off something. I might just let him kill me. Hi. Oh, try harder. Thank you. So, they kind of get at this in the DLC with, um, with Braidor. Because Braidor is an old man in his cell and then when he invades you they actually use a different model of him that is younger. So they seem to be, like, kind of confirming that's what's happening. But German is, like, reverting to a younger version of himself to fight you. So... Let's look at... This is uh, Astral Lace. I don't know if she's still here, but, like, this blew my mind and explained an awful lot of things. Does he still have a peg? Like, yes. Um, so... I might have multiple images up for this. This is... German in the wheelchair. And... I'll try to do a little split-screen thing. This is the German boss. So you can see they look... They look slightly different. Um, you could put that down to, okay, maybe one of them is, like, older, like, the the younger version is, like, a little leaner and everything, and that's why he looks the way he does. But, because Laura is good at 3D stuff, she showed me the version without textures. So that's textureless wheelchair German. And this is 
the same one, sorry. This is textureless boss German. Um, they are completely different people. <laughs> it's two completely different models that they've stuck the same face texture on. That's why he changes. It was originally two completely different people. And um, I can tell you, I wrote it down, I didn't make a slide because I was... I was, like, preparing this up until, like, 9.59. Where is it? Here we go. There is... Let's change this back to a uh, little wheelchair gunman. There is a removed character who lives in the workshop and he's an old man in a wheelchair but his name is Izzy and he has a ton of dialogue um i don't i won't read the whole thing out it was never recorded it's just it's just subtitles but he says like um He's like, ah, oh, the stories are true, a hunter from the dream, clad in the moon's aroma, who fights away beasts. I've been admiring you for a long time. My name is Izzy. Do you want to chat with me about all this? I'm not very smart, but I will give all I can to help you. And then he's just sort of, like, grateful that you talk to him. But he's in the, um, he's in the workshop, and he says to you, like, he tells you about old Yarn, and he's like, one of the chalices is in the valley, they, they gave into the beast disease, the hunters should go there. He's like, give, he's prompting you to go places. And, um, yeah, he's, um, yeah, here we go. Um, and then he's like, ah, do you, do you ever, I see that you sometimes talk to that doll, but she never talks to me, she's inactive for me. Like, I, I want to talk to her properly, but there's no way I can do it. And then he basically just has a bunch of exposition that we already know about Ludwig. So, yeah, um, it looks for all the world. Like, there were two different characters. <laughs> there was the guy in the wheelchair, who at this point's called Izzy. And he was like the guy who assisted you. And he, like, he was, like, a kind of helpful uh, hub NPC. And then there was, like, the first hunter. This, like, scythe-wielding maniac. And then they just kind of decided to make them the same guy by giving them the same face texture. And that's why his model changes. And that's why, like, if you know, like, how the, the AI scripts and everything work... Um, German, the wheelchair version, has no AI. He's actually just, like, an inanimate object that triggers dialogue. That's why he never moves, and he doesn't react to anything apart from disappearing. Because he was added, like, really late in the day. But it looks like he started out as this easy character. And yet, um, last protagonist is bringing up Archibald. There is also a cut dialogue for Archibald. But, like... Again, like, there's a character in, in Bloodborne called Izzy, but this is not the same Izzy. And there's also, this Archibald character is not the same Archibald. It's just, like, a, they liked the name Archibald. For the same reason that, like, there are multiple Lawrences and multiple Mikkel Ashes. It's just a name that they like. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that is, I think, pretty much everything I wanted to go over. I'm at the end of my folder. I've done all 71 slides. Uh, were there 71? All 83. I've done 83 of these, and I think that's enough. Um, actually, I'm, I might just, before we go, I'll, like, uh, show you off some other stuff. Like, this is just the old, um, an old map of Upper Cathedral Ward. Come back. 
it's like this is um there's like underground there was like going to be a, an underground spiral passage at some point like in cathedral ward i don't know where it would have gone but like it exists uh no idea where it went um there is a reference on like that big developer map i showed that talks about a spiral staircase and it says spiral staircase under the church cemetery and like this this kind of looks like the church cemetery it's like in the church there's a bunch of crosses so yeah um that's that's the concept stuff i think that's pretty much everything um i have another folder i wonder if there's anything left over in that while we're up here uh oh yeah this thing okay one one more thing so this that is uh do i have the old yana map i don't because i didn't go that way never mind um this this here that is the very very early like lantern equivalent it was these statues and they just work like like a stat like a lantern they just let you warp and um that statue you can still see it in the game because it is in the hunter's dream and it's this one so uh, the reason like this is is here is that like the dream would have been connected to these statues somehow I don't know why. This is like they are after they used the dead bodies, but before they went to warp chairs. And yeah, that one there I'm showing off. That is that's old Yarnum. That's right um, where the uh, the lantern for old Yarnum is. I won't warp there because I haven't got the lantern open and I have to run there. But like you, you'll know where it is. Uh. Do I have anything else? Well, I'm glad people liked it. Um, I think I'm pretty mu Oh, okay, Clock Tower Patient. Yeah, alright. People probably already know this, but that is the... Um, that's like an, a very, very early version of the Clock Tower Patients. That we have in the DLC, but this one is for the Waking World. And I have no idea if it was meant to be that big or not. But yeah, there it is. So the idea of there being like like enlarged brain people in the in Upper Cathedral Ward, like it was kinda always there. And I've talked about this before, but I think the um the brain of Mensis being the center of the the nightmare of mensis that was meant to like if it had been in there that would have recalled the patients in the clock like the idea of there being this huge kind of pulsing frenzying brain was meant to like further further connect like yarnum to um wherever the nightmare was at the time uh Um. Okay, one last thing. Okay, so if you've looked at the um the uh, the cut chalices, there's like an a uh, there's like a boss arena that a lot of them end on, and it's like it's like this this ocean side thing. Uh, do I have a picture of it? Maybe I don't. That sucks. Um, damn it. I have the concept out of it. Okay. People will kind of know what I... Oh, why does it have doll joints? Um, Because it's just a very, very like rough model. I don't think it was actually meant to look like that. It's like not finished. Um... That area there, that looks a lot like... Like, there's a, an area you can get to at the bottom of the chalices. 
that's got like that um that background to it and like one thing about going through the parameter files is that a lot of the the enemies in the game the very early ones they're tagged ds2 which means as far as i can tell demon souls 2 yeah, this was... Because, I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that all the, like, Umbasa references and old ones and stuff, that wasn't just um, a little callback. Like, this was meant to be actually Demon Souls 2. Oh, I found it. Good. Okay. Um, where are we going? Now I've lost it again. Here it is. This is the arena. And if you've played... Well, it looks a bit like the Kiln of the First Flame. It looks even more like... Something else. It looks almost exactly like... The end point of Demon Souls. Because a lot of people... Saw this... And they thought, oh, that's the fishing hamlet. That's like Alpha Fishing Hamlet. Because it's like the coast. But if you go there, there's no boats. There's no wood. There's no sails. It's actually stone. There's stone everywhere. Which doesn't make sense for it being the hamlet, but... There is a ton of stone and a lake and all this other crap that matches it underneath the Nexus. And that is the place where they summon the old one. And, yeah. So my, my kind of theory about the whole thing is that you were going to go deeper and deeper into the chalices, and then at the bottom of the chalices it would reveal that it was Boletaria. That it's like the chalices were the ruins of Boletaria. And it looks like that is what they were doing, that the very, very, very bottom of the chalices is this, like, weird sea coast, but it turns out it's this. So yeah, that is... I think that's all she wrote. That's all we got. So... Goodbye, everyone. That was a uh, pretty even three and a half hours, so. Uh, good night, slash good morning, slash good afternoon, wherever you are. And I hope this was uh, interesting. Oh, yeah, Claim will bring up. There is actually a cut area of uh, Demon Souls that was a beast person place. It had, like, uh, was, like, bear people and wolf people and everything, but yeah, yeah. Um, goodbye, everyone. And, um, if you got any more questions, I guess just, like, at me on Twitter, I'll probably be able to hook you up with it. You can check the Bloodborne, Bloodborne hyphen wiki if there's anything you're interested in, just search there. It will be there, because the second anything comes out, I am required to document it there, so... Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm glad you all liked it. And, um, yeah, I guess the next thing I do will be the last half of Kuon. So, bye-bye, everyone. Just wave again. Bombasa.